Hello friends. Welcome to the Muse fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see title what if Naruto manipulated the 9 Jinchurikis of 9 crimes. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. A young blonde man, just over 24 years old, slowly opened his eyes and sat up in his bed. He looked around at his relatively empty room. The walls were blank and bare and dresser was almost empty. Only his sheets were unique, which were a bright orange. He just loved the color, even if it was strange. The young man walked over and picked up the only thing that was on the dresser, a small statue. It was a stone fox with nine tails flowing behind it and was sitting on a circle of wood with a small inscription on the bottom, for the man who assembled the nine. He smiled at the statue and put it back down, then he grabbed a shirt from the ground and put it over his well-built body, as all he was wearing was a pair of shorts. Walking out of his bedroom and into his living room, he heard one of two cell phones on he kept on the desk ringing. The prepaid one, which he only bought so that he it couldn't be traced. He walked over and answered the phone, Hello? A male voice responded, Naruto? The blonde sighed, that would be the only person who's ever answered this phone, yes. The man on the other end responded, All right, fair point. It's Kakashi. Just wanted to give you a little heads up that we're gonna have some guys coming to take you in today. Naruto got a twinge of irritation on his face, do I at least have time to grab myself some breakfast? The things Naruto said never failed to make Kakashi laugh, yeah, you have like half an hour. I'll see you when you get to the precinct. All right. See you then, Naruto replied and hung up the phone. At least he knew he wouldn't have to go on an empty stomach. Yamato had known what he wanted to be from a young age. He'd grown up never knowing who his parents were and being bounced from foster home to foster home. Not all of them were the nicest places in the world, but the people who'd been there to help were the police. If the bottles started being thrown or the fists start to fly, he could always call them to come and help. As soon as he got the chance, he went into the police academy and quickly rose through the ranks. Before he knew it, he made detective. Now he was standing at the front door of a man he'd been after for nearly two years. Granted, what he had on him was shaky, but it gave him a chance to take a peek around the boy's apartment and question him. He knocked on the door of the large apartment, the brown-haired man was wearing one of his nicer suits and was with two men who were in police uniforms, Naruto Uzumaki, this is the police, open the door. The door opened and with a bored look on his face, no need to yell, you could have just knocked. Hello Detective Yamato. Yamato tried to look calm, although he was going insane on the inside, hello Mr. Uzumaki. We have a warrant to search the premises. Naruto motioned for all of them to come in, you didn't have to get a warrant, the lovely officers of the Konoha Police Department are always welcome in my home, can I get you something to drink? Yamato couldn't believe how calm and polite he was being. No thank you. We'll also be needing you to come down to the precinct and answer a few questions for us. Not a problem, I don't really have much to do today. May I ask what all this is about though? Naruto asked, feigning ignorance. Yamato wanted to smack the innocent smile right off from his face, there's been some claims that you're connected to some art that recently went missing. It was shipped to the museum, but never actually arrived. This was very valuable stuff, so we're being pressured to follow up on every lead we get. Naruto had a feeling that's what this was about, really? Well I wouldn't know anything about that. Why don't we just go to the precinct now while your friends here look for my apartment? That'll work just fine. I'll drive you there myself, Yamato responded, surprised that he was so willing to the let them be alone in his home. Naruto grabbed the coat from his chair, alright, let's head out then. He and Yamato walked out of the apartment and down the stairs. Naruto lived on top floor of the Hidden Leaf apartment complex, called that because of its peaceful secluded nature. It was one of the nicest complexes in all of Konoha, a relatively large city with a population just shy of 600,000 people. The Hidden Leaf wasn't the priciest place in Konoha, but Naruto preferred not to be very flashy. That would be far too risky. Honestly Detective Yamato, with the number of times you've called me in for questioning I almost think you have something against me. Naruto said with a sly smile. Yamato ground his teeth as Naruto kept picking at him, what can I say, you just seem to keep falling into our crosshairs. 
I mean almost every investigation I do or hear about has your name coming up. Naruto just loved to push Yamato's buttons, you're a homicide detective right? That means you don't really cover theft. So you must have heard about this and ask specifically to question me yourself. Yamato couldn't deny how intelligent Naruto was, I figured it was better that you were questioned by me rather than some stranger. Yamato opened passenger side door of his car and Naruto got in and said, well thank you for being so considerate. My pleasure, Yamato said as he slammed the door. Naruto just kept smirking. This was going to be a fun day for him. It didn't take long for the two of them to get to the precinct and to get Naruto set up in an interrogation room. Yamato was currently watching him through one-way glass, so he could see Naruto but Naruto couldn't see him. Honestly, Yamato had lost track ages ago of how many times he'd watched the blonde through the glass like this. In his gut, Yamato knew that this guy was dirty. For the past 21 months, Yamato had been keeping track of when it start, almost two-thirds s of the murder investigations he did seem to involve Naruto in some way. At bare minimum, the name Uzumaki came up. When Yamato looked into it, it turned out that Naruto Uzumaki was on just about everybody's watch list. It was like everyone in the world thought he was a criminal, but no one had an ounce of proof. That's when a thin man walked in with gray hair, wearing a suit that's similar to Yamato's but he was wearing a mask made of thin black cloth that covered his mouth. He also had a patch over his left eye as well. Yamato noticed as soon as he walked in, Hey Kakashi, do you need something? Kakashi looked at the who was in the interrogation room and sighed, Come on Yamato, again, why are you putting yourself through this again? You know you don't have shit on him. A buddy of mine got a call in today that said our friend here might be linked to some stolen art. I told him that everything dealing with Uzumaki should go through me, Yamato told the older man with determination. Kakashi really didn't want to hear that Yamato was gonna be watching every little thing Naruto did, aren't you going a little overboard here? You've got better things to do with your time you know? Yamato couldn't have felt Kakashi was more wrong, I know this sick is hiding something and I'm not just gonna let him walk. Kakashi shook his head and ran his fingers through his hair, I'm 45 years old Yamato, but I went grey way back when I was in my 20s because I stressed myself out chasing leads that would never gonna go anywhere. Take it from me, you're better off just cutting this guy loose and finding a case that'll have a chance of being prosecuted. Hell, you don't even know if he actually did anything. Yamato looked back into the interrogation room, oh he did something alright, and I'll be on him like shit on velcro until I get find out what. Alright, I guess it's your decision, if you need some help then I'll come in and take my mask off to scare him, Kakashi joked as he left the room. Very funny Kakashi, Yamato said as he continued to stare at Naruto, alright you freaking punk, let's see what you're hiding. As Naruto took stock of the all too familiar integration, he noted the same thing he always noted. This room was one of the most boring places a person could ever be stuck in. The walls were a baby barf greenish color and paint was chipping. His home may not have had a ton in it, but at least he kept the walls a pleasant white that didn't insult your eyes. There were nothing to look at in the room either, expect for a few filing cabinets and the glass window. He couldn't wait for Yamato to get in here so that he had something to do. Finally the door opened and Yamato walked in, throwing a file on the table, we've still got this left over from the last time we had to go through your house. Right, back when my old teacher Mizuki died, Naruto recollected. Yamato corrected him, he was murdered, and you had motive and means to do it. Yes, but you didn't find a shred of evidence that I had anything to do with it, besides, I wouldn't call him flunking me in high school a motive for murder, Naruto said remembering his old teacher and chuckling to himself at where the asshole was now. Yamato looked through the file and showed Naruto some pictures of high-end electronics, for someone who flunked high school you do very well for yourself. Naruto looked over the pictures, what can I say, the restaurant I started up is doing very well. Tuchi and Ayame are making me a killing. A lot of people these days are using their business to launder money so they can spend their ill-gotten gains, Yamato told him matter-of-factly. Naruto always loved Yamato's lack of subtlety, I've heard something about that kind of stuff, yeah, of course I'd never do something like that. Of course not, Yamato replied with a hint of anger. Naruto decided to cut to the chase, so other than this call, what makes you think I might have something to do with this? Yamato had been hoping he wouldn't ask that, now he'd have to bluff, well the first time we went into your apartment we found a few pieces of very nice art. 
you're clearly an art lover and we've got no other leads. With the it being such an expensive piece of art, we just didn't want to leave any stone unturned. Naruto acted like it was no big deal, I understand. You'll soon see that I have absolutely nothing to hide. Yamato pulled out one last picture and it was of the fox statue Naruto's dresser, can ask what the deal is with this fox thing. I've just gotta know what in the hell it is. Naruto smiled at the very mention of the fox, that my friend, would be the Kyubi. He's an ancient monster of Japanese folklore. Legend had it that he could destroy mountains and create valleys with a flick of one of his nine tails. However, he's also a master of tricky. They say that he could take to form of anything he wanted to and that no one could tell the difference. Yamato could see he'd taken quite an interest in this thing, you seem to be quite fond of it. You have no idea. I've got a tattoo of it on my back that I got when I was younger. The Kyubi takes what it wants, and doesn't ask question. Sometimes it won't even use its power and use his intelligence just for fun. Kind of like me, Naruto said with a hint of pride in his voice. Yamato had a feeling he'd found what he could use to get to Naruto, are you saying that you take whatever you want and don't care about the consequences? Naruto caught himself very quickly, I was more referring to not always using my power and sometimes just letting my intelligence take over. So you're saying you're very powerful? Yamato said, still attacking everything he could. Naruto just had to laugh, is there anything I can say that you won't try and find some deeper meaning in? Yamato leaned back in his chair. Maybe it's just the way you talk. Before Yamato could respond, the door opened on the interrogation room and woman with long black hair and ruby eyes who was wearing a suit and skirt walked in, well then it's a good thing he won't be doing any more talking. Naruto looked up at the woman, well if it isn't my lovely lawyer Ms. Kuranai Yuhi, always good to see you. Likewise Naruto. Now detective, care to explain to me why you're talking to my client without his attorney present? Better yet how did you got a warrant for his apartment on nothing more than an anonymous phone call? Kuranai asked with a lot of irritation. Yamato knew Kuranai Yuhi very well at this point, she wasn't just a lawyer, she's was Konoha's best lawyer. They called her the mistress of illusion because of her ability to make a jury or a judge believe almost anything, that's really none of your concern Ms. Yuhi. It is if I think you're harassing my client, how many time have you called him in with little or no evidence over the past year? You're lucky I haven't filed a complaint with your superiors, Kuranai said in a very threatening voice. Naruto stood and stopped her, now Kuranai, he's just doing his job, I'm sure their search turned up nothing. Kuranai turned back to Yamato, on that much he's right. I stopped by there before I came here and they found absolutely nothing. Once again detective, you've wasted everyone's time, please don't let it happen in the future. Yamato could see he was gonna have to save face, my apologies, I'll try and be more cautious next time. Kuranai walked out with Naruto, see to it that you do, or I will have your badge. As they left Yamato mumbled at himself, another day, another crime you've wormed your way out of. Kuranai was advising Naruto as they walked away, I'm telling you Naruto, you need to file a complaint. You can't let them keep dragging you in like this. Naruto waved the whole thing off as usual, nah. It's just too much fun watching Yamato chase after me over and over again. If that's what you want, then fine. You're just lucky Kakashi called me before you could have given Yamato anything he could work with, Kuranai warned. Naruto felt she was underestimating him, I wouldn't do something that's stupid and you know it. Why don't we just change the subject? For instance, how's it going with you and Asuma? Kuranai just had to smile, you were right, once you get to know him he's sweet, kind, smart, and, she blushed a little, he's great in bed. Naruto knew they'd hit it off, didn't know you had it in you Kuranai. Good for you. He could see Kakashi has walked out behind them, I'm gonna go and chat up Kakashi. Always good to so see you Kuranai. Yeah, you too, Kuranai said with a little wave. Kakashi walked up behind him, being careful to make sure Yamato wasn't watching them, care to explain what in hell happened back there. Naruto gave him a quizzical look, what do you mean? It was the same thing that always happens. Yamato brought me in, I screwed with him a bit, then left. I don't give a shit about that. Who in the hell is leaving anonymous calls about you? Kakashi said with both fear and anger in his voice. Naruto suddenly understood, oh that, yeah, I'm going to look into it before I can give you a definite answer. That wasn't good enough for Kakashi, well you'd better be fast about it, 
Yamato has his heart set on taking your ass down and whoever left this call seems to want to help him. Fudging the occasional piece of paperwork or pointing them in the wrong direction about an investigation every now and then is one thing, but I'm starting to have to protect your ass every other week. It's not gonna be long before people start questioning everything I do. Naruto couldn't help but feel a bit guilty at the thought of Kakashi getting caught because of him. For the past three and a half years Kakashi had been Naruto's man on the inside. He told Naruto what all was happening in the precinct and who all they were looking at for recent crimes. On more than one occasion Kakashi had told Naruto who to pay off for what to do when people started to look into his business. Without him, Naruto wouldn't know what to do, look man, I'm sorry about all this. I know you're sticking your neck out for me and I appreciate it. I'll tell Kurenai to file a complaint about Yamato so he'll stop chasing me and then figure out who's trying to get me. Kakashi was about to say something else but Naruto was already chasing after Kurenai and yelling, hey Kurenai, hold on second. Kakashi didn't feel completely in the right here, maybe I did stick my neck out for you. Dot but let's face it, I owed you that much. Flashback to four years ago, you son of a bitch. You ruined my life, Naruto screamed from the holding cell. Kakashi had never felt this guilty before, please, just let me explain. Naruto just kept screaming, I don't care, there's nothing that you can say that would make me forgive you. Let me try and make it up to you, I'll, I'll just, Kakashi tried to think. Naruto turned away and walked back to the other eight people in his holding cell, you can go yourself for all I care. Kakashi just kept looking into the bars with horror filled eyes, he would make this right, he just had to make it right. Flashback end Kakashi did make it up to Naruto that day, although it had taken some doing. From that day on he'd been looking out for Naruto. As far as what he'd done to Naruto to make him feel so bad. Well he really didn't want to think about that. At least not today, it was just too painful. Once Naruto had gotten to Kurenai and told her to file the complaint, which she'd been very happy about, he called up a buddy of his to start trying to figure out who'd gotten him taken in. Of course he once again used the prepaid cell phone. He dialed the phone and waited as it rang, come on man. Pick up, pick up pick the hell up. Find the other line answered and a young man said, hello, Nara technical support, Shikamaru speaking. Hey Shikamaru, it's Naruto. I got something I need you to do for me, Naruto explained. Shikamaru Nara was a young, thin, black-haired genius who had helped Naruto on several occasions. He may have acted like the head of an elections repair shop, but his real skill that he used to make cash was his ability to hack into just about any system in the world. That was just what Naruto needed right now, what did Ya need Naruto? We got someone who seems to be sticking their nose in my business. Kakashi should have sent you something so that you can figure out who it is. He's not allowed to track down anonymous calls, Naruto started. But I am, Shikamaru finished, I'll figure track down the where the call was made from. Naruto knew he'd called the right guy, thanks a million, I'll be sure to send you your usual fee. Shikamaru had been pulling up what Kakashi sent him as they spoke, that's all I need. I can tell already that the call was sent from a landline. People still uses those? Naruto joked. Apparently they do. I can almost guarantee you it's gonna be a house or apartment. I should have the address in 10 minutes, Shikamaru informed him. Naruto always was impressed with how fast Shikamaru with this crap, sounds perfect. Do me a favor and send the address to Kiba and Ino once you've got it. Sure thing man. Talk to you later, Shikamaru said and hung up. Naruto hung up his line as well and then started to dial some other numbers, while they're taking care of that, I've got a meeting to set up. Kiba Inazuka and Ino Yamanaka had married at a very young age, just 19 years old. Kiba was studying to become a veterinarian while making ends meet as a bartender and Ino was working a day job at her parents' flower shop until she could finish up with her psychology degree. They both had lived rather privileged lives and grew very bored of it very quickly. No risks, no worries, no excitement. That boredom ended briefly when they'd first met each other, but before long they just became bored together. However, they did finally find something to amuse the two of them. Breaking the law. It started off so small, they would occasionally skip out on a check or steal a little trinket from a friend. Before they even knew what happened they were out of control, breaking the law at every chance they got. For them, it was like some strange kind of drug. Pru raw excitement. While it almost got them killed on a couple of occasions, 
They soon found a way to get their excitement without getting into trouble with the help of one Naruto Uzumaki. He'd met Kiba before and when he found out about him being pulled in for assault and battery, Naruto made him an offer. Kiba and Ino would become his personal fixers and Naruto would make sure they never got caught. It was a dream come true for the two lovers. At the moment the two of them were having lunch in a nice restaurant with another couple they were friends with. They were bullshitting about student loans and other high-end crap. Ino was talking about her flower shop stuff, and so this guy comes in and asks for half a dozen roses. I tell him that we only sell flowers by the dozen, which is true, it's my mom's policy. He flips out for no damn reason. Says that he only needs half a dozen and that's all he's paying for. Eventually I got him to pay for full dozen but I almost had called the cops. Their friends laughed, oh man, that's just too much. I think my girl can take care of herself just fine, she doesn't any cops to take care of her, Kiba said as he felt his phone go off. He looked down at his phone and it was just an address with a short sentence, these guys seem to know something about a blonde friend of yours. Go find out how. Kiba nudged his wife's shoulder, hey babe, we're gonna have to cut this lunch short. He showed her the phone so that the others couldn't see it, looks like we do. I'm sorry guys, we'll catch up with you later. The two of them got up with their friends waving goodbye, not a problem guys, don't be strangers now. Kiba and Ino waved back at them, don't worry, we won't. As soon as they were out of earshot Ino said, talk about a couple of douchebags. Kiba couldn't agree more, yeah, but they make us look good, at least we got to leave early right? Ino and Kiba got to their car and pulled a couple of pistol out of their trunks, I guess that's true. Now let's go have some real fun. If you asked anyone in Konoha who the Nine Kings were, they'd all look at you like you were insane. Half of the people would look at you like because they wouldn't have a clue what you were talking about, the other half would look at you like because you'd have to be crazy to talk about the Nine Kings. So who were the Nine Kings? In the most basic terms, they were the Nine Kings of various crimes that took place in Konoha. No one was better than them and no one questioned them because they knew what would happen if they did. Naruto was head of this little organization, with his job being to use all of his connections in law enforcement and the crime world to make sure none of them got caught. Since each king had their own domain to make cash with that no one could challenge them in, none of them got into any fights. It was the perfect setup. Speaking of Naruto, he was waiting for for the other eight kings to arrive in one of his favorite restaurants. Not his own of course, that would be far too risky. A friend of his, Choji Akamichi, owned a nice restaurant and was more than willing to look the other way about anything illegal that happened in exchange for a little extra cash in his check at the end of the night. Naruto was sitting at the table with Kakashi by his side as a sort of bodyguard. All of the kings trusted one another, but they weren't idiots. No one was gonna go in completely unprotected in case something big went down. The first of the kings to arrive besides Naruto was Gara, the king of hitmen. If you wanted someone in Konoha dead and you weren't willing to do it yourself, he was who you saw. Gara was Naruto's age with short red hair and a thin build. He was a rather quiet person, but if you set him off you'd best get the hell out of the way. Next to him was his older brother Konkuro, a brown hair well built man who knew more lethal poisons that wouldn't show up on an autopsy than you could shake a stick at, and his older sister Tamari, a beautiful blonde who knew her way around several different kinds of knives. He walked up to Naruto and Kakashi and nodded, it is good to see the two of you again. I do hope this meeting won't have too much bad news. Naruto had gotten used to Gara's monotone at this point, I wouldn't say bad news, I just need to fill you guys in on something. Gara turned around and sat down in his seat, I'm glad to hear it. Just after he sat down, the next king, or queen more accurately, walked in. Yugito, a blonde woman wearing incredibly nice clothes, was the master of white-collar crime. Bank fraud, embezzlement, and insurance fraud were her bread and butter. She was great at what she did, but that didn't mean she was well-liked. Even the other kings had to admit, she was a snobby bitch. Dodai, an old man with one eye, was her personal bodyguard. He might have looked old, but he could still hold his own against the best of them. She didn't even bother to say hello to anyone, she just went and sat right down, this better be good Naruto. I was in the middle of a rather important meeting. Naruto almost snapped at her but Kakashi cut in, I assure, it's very important Yugito. Before Naruto could speak his mind the next king arrived. Yugaru was the youngest king at just 20 years old, a blonde boy who looked like he wasn't even done growing. 
He was the king of falsifying don'ts. Not just simple little things, he could create and destroy people with just a few pieces of paper. He didn't need a gun or a knife to kill someone, just paper and ink. His guards were two of the baddest mothers in all of Konoha. Zabuza was known as a demon for his merciless killings and Kisame had actually gotten the nickname, the shark, because of his sharper than natural teeth and the rumors that he'd dabbled in cannibalism. It wasn't true, but he let the rumor go on for fear's sake. Yagaru went right to his chair and sat down while Zabuza and Kisame said a quick hello to Naruto. Kakashi tried to talk to the young king, so how's life been treating you Yagaru? Yagaru was clearly not interested in a chat, I'm not up for a conversation Kakashi. I've never been much of a talker. Kakashi frowned under his mask as another king walked in. Roshi was known by most as the king bribery. While traditionally a white collar crime, not even Yugito could deny just how good Roshi was at it. He didn't necessarily do the bribery himself, he was usually more of an advisor. It was his job to tell someone who to bribe or if they should be getting bribed, how much they should pay or how much they should get paid, things like that. When trying not get yourself in a whole shit ton of trouble, a guy like Roshi was nice to have. For his monetary fee, of course. Kuritsuchi, his 23-year-old black-haired cousin, was guarding him, and she was one hell of a fighter. The red-haired bearded man shook Naruto and Kakashi's hands, nice to see you two again. How are you doing? We're doing good, thanks, Naruto said, how are you too? Can't complain, not that anyone would listen if I did, Roshi said as he sat down. Kakashi chuckled at the joke when Han, another of the kings who wore a mask and a large red straw hat, arrived. All that you could see of him were his eyes, which were an orangish red color. He was a quiet man who only ever spoke when spoken to. That attitude, plus the fact that he was incredibly tall and muscular, made many people nervous around him. He was the king black market goods. If you wanted to sell something that was stolen in Konoha, you had to go through him. Han didn't really say anything, he just tipped his hat to them. Next to him was his bodyguard, Didera, a man obsessed with explosions and art, which he considered to be one and the same. He was a rather feminine man, even having been mistaken for a woman more than once. Those that made that mistake never made it more than once. In fact they never found all of their body parts in the same place again. When Han sat down Naruto asked him, so are you doing well Han? Han said simply, I'm doing very well, thank you. Naruto wanted to think of something to get his attention, but nothing came to mind before the next king showed up. Yutakata was the king of prostitution, and he was damn good at it. The thin dark haired man wasn't a pimp by any means, he was too smart to pull something like that. He treated all of his women fairly and never beat or abused them. They knew he expected a certain amount of the money they made to be given to him and if they didn't like it, they could leave. If they wanted to sell him out, then he'd kill them. He wouldn't it be cruel about it though, just a quick shot to the back of the head and it was over. Next to him was the incredibly beautiful and deadly Mei, with auburn hair, a curvaceous figure, and mile-long legs. She may have looked sweet but she was a killer though and trough. Mei had started out as another call girl, but when Yutakata saw her other skills he decided to use her elsewhere. Occasionally she did go back to her old profession, as men were willing to pay a high price to be with her. An incredibly high price actually. Mei gave Naruto a quick wink as she walked by, she was a very flirtatious woman, and Yutakata just said, glad we can all get together again. Hopefully we have a good time. I'll do my best, Naruto replied with a slight smile. Well hey there lover boy, how've you been? Asked the next king, actually queen, as she walked in. Fu was 24 years old, Naruto's age, with tan skin and green hair that was supposedly natural, although not many people believed her. She was known for her illegal trafficking of goods and exotic animals. Unlike most traffickers, Fu always made sure the animals they captured and sold were treated humanely and went to a good home. All Fu was trying to do was bring rare animals into a good home. The trafficking of goods was where she made her real money. She was being guarded by an old friend of hers, a long black-haired man Shibuki. He was just a general bodyguard, not really a lot to him. If she needed to be protected, Fu knew that she could count on Naruto. Their relationship was far from just a professional one. They'd spent many a night in each other's arms. Naruto looked at tight skirt and slightly revealing top, damn Fu, you look great. Fu gave him a little giggle, maybe you'll get to see how good later. 
Right now we've got a meeting to get underway. Ah man, you're killing me, Naruto said as Fu brushed her hand against his cheek. With that the final king arrived, a large black man who most people knew as Killer B. He was the king of narcotics, although he didn't touch them himself. As they say, never get high on your own supply. Killer B mainly just sold whatever he could get his hands on. If you paid the fee, B was fine. If you didn't, well let's just say price was no longer the thing that was getting cut. For whatever reason, he also liked to rap when he talked at times, yo, together we are the nine kings. So let commence with the meeting. B's older brother, A, who was his bodyguard and was ripped enough to kill someone with his bare hands, smacked him, shut the hell up B. Naruto found B's rapping very funny, just as much fun as I remember B. He's right though, why don't you sit down and we'll get this meeting started. Both of them were high as a kite, so damn high that they couldn't even remember their names. They were two nobodies, living out their days getting high off prescription drugs in a house that looked like a damn shack. It had a TV, not that they could afford to have cable, and a phone. That was pretty much it. Every last dime they had, they spent on drugs. They were just laying on the ground, staring up at the ceiling with vacant looks on their faces. It was empty bliss for quite some time, until they heard a knock on the door. One of them managed to stumble their way up and answer the door, what the do you want? Oh shit, get over here dude. The other guy got up and went to the door to find a smoking ha blonde there, well hi boys, how are you doing? They couldn't believe this was happening, did you call her? The other guy shook his head, no way man, I ain't got that kind of cash. My name's Eno. Do you mind if my friend and I come inside? Eno asked the two stoned men. Holy shit, she's got a friend, one of the men said, grabbing his friend's shirt. The other one was almost bouncing up and down, yeah, get your friend in here babe. Eno walked in and was quickly followed by her husband. The two of them took out their pistols and pointed at the stoned idiot's heads, thank you so much for letting us in so nicely boys. The men had a very quick mood swing, oh man. Look, what the did we ever do to you people? Kiba walked around them, his gun never pointing away from the man's head, it's not what you did to us, it's the call you made about a friend of ours, Naruto Uzumaki. Wait, that's the name that doctor guy said on the phone, one of them yelled. The other added on, yeah, we didn't have anything to do with that. We barely even heard what he said, he was just some guy who wanted to use our phone. Ino pressed her gun to the man's temple, so why did you let him use your phone? Because he was a doctor and he gave us our favorite pills. All he wanted us to do was let him use our phone, he told them. Kiba rolled his eyes, and you never thought it was weird? They were both in tears, we just wanted the ing drugs man, we swear, please don't kill us. Eno clicked off her safety, we would, but a couple of drug addicts who would do something that stupid for some pills really can't be trusted in any way, shape, or form. You're too stupid to try and trick us and too high to remember anything else. Pleasure talking with you though. Both Kiba and Ino pulled their triggers and sent the men's brains splattering across the floor. Kiba looked at the mess they'd made. Thank God we ain't gotta clean that up. Ino looked around. Their couch seems pretty clean, perfectly usable, nice and sturdy too. Kiba knew what she was getting at. You wanna on their couch, don't you? You got a problem with that? Ino asked with a seductive smile. Kiba took off his jacket, not even a little bit. Just let me call Shikamaru and tell him what we found. All of the kings had gotten a little irritated when Naruto's phone went off right in the middle of filling them in on what had gone down with Yamato, but when Naruto had seen it was Shikamaru calling, he just had to pick up. They all watched him him nod and occasionally mumble something like, so you're sure they had no connection to anyone, and, I guess that makes sense if he was a doctor. Naruto hung up and told the others, alright, so it's looking like it was doctor who'd made the call. Oh for God's sake, before we start hearing this crap about some doctor who probably won't even turn out to have existed, I'm just gonna say what we're all thinking. Why aren't we wondering what Han's place in all this is? I mean, it was his stolen art that they were saying you're involved with right? Yugito just bursted out. The usually calm Han stood up, what did you just say? Yugito stood up too, you heard me, I was just telling the truth. Han's eye was twitching in rage and he said in a low growl, for a woman you've got a set of balls on you. Naruto slammed his hand on the table, enough, both of you just shut the up. Yugito glared at him hard, don't you dare talk to me that way. 
Don't you dare open your mouth again. You're accusing Han on a some baseless hunch and I won't stand for it, Naruto started. I'd trust any of the Nine Kings with my life and I'd like to think you'd all do the same. Gara decided to cut in, do I need to remind you, Yugito, of the promise we all made four years ago? He pulled his shirt down and showed them all a tanuki tattoo on his shoulder and Naruto pulled his shirt up to show them the kayubi on his back. Yugito felt rather ashamed and felt the tattoo of a blue cat with two tails on her ankle. Yugaru felt his tattoo of a three-tailed turtle on side. Roshi felt the four-tailed ape tattoo on his left bicep and Han felt the five-tailed horse on his right. Yutataku put his hand on the six-tailed slug on his chest and Fu brushed the seven-tailed locust on her waist. B put his hand on his neck where his eight-tailed bull tattoo was. Naruto reminded them all, when we all got put in that holding cell together, we promised that we would protect one another and make each other completely untouchable. You saw my tattoo and Gara's tattoo and decided you each get one for yourself as a mark. That's the way we've lived for the past four years and we've built something pretty great here haven't we? They all nodded and Yugito looked at Han, I guess that I shouldn't have accused so quickly. Naruto, as you were saying. Naruto finally finished, my guy says that a doctor used some no-name druggies phone to make the call accusing me. He probably pulled some files to see who had a track record of being cut off from getting painkillers for abusing them and went to the trashy place he could find so that whoever he used wouldn't be credible enough to ID him. Okay, but why? He must have known it wouldn't actually do anything, Fu reasoned. Naruto had a bad feeling about that, I think he was trying to send a message, he knows who we are and he's coming for us. Gara had a simple solution, we'll just have to kill him. Well yeah, but we have to figure out who he is first. All we know is that he's a doctor which isn't much to go on. I just wanted to fill you all in on what happened. Keep an eye out for anybody being weird, okay? They all nodded, good, dinner's on me and I'll see you all later. Naruto got up to leave but Fu grabbed his arm, you're not going anywhere without me. We haven't gotten together in two and a half weeks. For the rest of the night, you're mine. Naruto grinned and told Kakashi, you can leave for the night, looks like I'm going to be very busy. They walked away and Kakashi called, don't forgot to use protection you too. Naruto and Fu had barely even gotten into the blonde's apartment before they started going at it. As soon as Naruto closed the door, Fu pushed him against a wall and smashed her lips into his. The girl's lips were just as soft and exhilarating as Naruto remembered. He kissed back and gave a soft moan as Fu slid her skilled tongue into his mouth. She let loose a little surprised squeal when Naruto picked her up by the waist and brought her into his bedroom. Naruto threw her onto his bed and took of his shirt, it has been way too long since we did this. Fu removed her own shirt to reveal she was wearing nothing underneath, well then come and get it big boy. Naruto licked his lips, my pleasure. Orochimaru was a man with very few allies, and even fewer friends. He was a sickly looking man, with pale white skin and greasy black hair. Not the really the kind of person you felt like you could trust. This made it a shocking to most that he was a doctor of all things. The nasty looking man wasn't a typical physician though, as he'd done some less than honorable things while he worked. Whenever someone who was homeless or didn't have a family, basically someone that nobody would miss, came into the hospital where he worked, he would invite them over to his house for the night so they'd have a place to stay. However, when you came to stay with Orochimaru. Dot you never got to leave. He used those people for his own personal experimentation. Orochimaru was a brilliant man, but most people found his experiments to be cruel and unusual. The majority of his experiments had to do with trying to increase the average human lifespan, through some rather disgusting means. He'd cut them open and tamper with just about anything he could find. Everyone he experimented on ended up looking like monsters once Orochimaru was finished, yet, no one he'd ever experimented on had lived, much to his dismay. Still, thanks to all his work with stem cells, organ transplantation, and other various other things, he was getting closer every day. The mad doctor was sitting at his desk right now, a file in his hand while planning what he wanted to do for his next experiment. He'd finished up with his normal patients half an hour ago, so he could focus on his little hobby. Orochimaru heard his prepaid cell phone go off on his desk and he had to answer when he was who the caller ID was. Good evening Madara, what can I do for? Madara coughed a couple of times before he responded, just checking in to see how the first phase of the plan is going. Oh it's going swimmingly, I made the call last night so I'm sure they got the message. 
It's been made quite clear to them something is very wrong with their organization, Orochimaru bragged. Madara tried to keep talking but it was hard with his constant coughing, good. Make sure you, cough, cough, do everything exactly as I told you or I will back out of my end of the deal. Orochimaru was slightly irritated at the way Madara was talking to him, fine, but for the record, I believe that I'm intelligent enough to help you actually plan this operation and not just be your little puppet. Frankly Orochimaru, while I do respect you, I'm smart enough run circles around you. However, cough, cough, I'm in no condition to argue right now, Madara rasped out, just keep doing as I say and you'll get your money when this all over. Orochimaru didn't even have the chance to say anything before Madara abruptly hung up. He really hated that old man, but he needed the money. He'd made a deal with that psycho just a few months ago and that was a day he'd never forget. Flashback, it was supposed to be a routine checkup on some rich old. Madara Uchiha was 103 year old, ancient by just about anybody's standards. He was the grandson of the founder of a massive weapons manufacturer, United Sharingan Defense. They were famous for their Suzano body armor, the best bulletproof vest ever made, the Mangekio sniper rifle, which any experienced sniper could clear a room from miles away with, and the Amaterasu flame grande, with just one you could burn down an entire city thanks to speed with which the flames spread. The Uchihas were billionaires. Key word being were, as their stocks had begun to take a huge hit to the point that they were worth almost nothing. The wars were all over right now and United Nations were even looking into some of the United Sharingan defense's past actions because there were claims the company had knowingly sold dangerous weapons to terrorist organizations. The worst part was, they actually had sold weapons to some very shady groups. Hey, the way Madara saw it if they were willing to pay the price, they got weapons. Once the investigation was over, the company was likely going have to pay some hefty fines and there'd maybe even a few arrests. Madara had at least been smart enough to make sure most of the blame would fall on him, as he was too old to for prison to be an issue anyways. He knew that the company would be banned from producing or selling any kind of weapons, as this wasn't the first time they'd been caught in the illegal weapons trade. Weapons were the only thing the United Sharingan Defense had the equipment to make. In the time it would take to find some new product to mass produce, they would go bankrupt. However, the Uchiha couldn't let their company fall beneath the companies of the Hyugas or the Abarames, that wasn't an option. Yet, there was only one thing as profitable as war, crime. Madara needed to get the Uchihas into the crime world, and he just needed a little help to do it. Help from a doctor he'd learned some very interesting things about. Orochimaru walked into Madara's room, which was filled with to brim with expensive items of various shapes and sizes, and sat his things down. Apparently Madara needed to make it known the moment you met him just how rich he was, even if his company was dying. You'd think the massive mansion that he lived in, despite the fact that he lived by himself, would be enough to tell you that. Sadly, with the way things were going he'd likely have to sell everything he owned just to pay off his debts. Orochimaru tried to make small talk as he rummaged through his bag for the things he needed, so Mr. Uchiha, I understand you're the head of a very large company. I was the head, Madara corrected him, after some new information came to light I was asked to step down. Orochimaru was still impressed, true, but to run a company from your bed, that must take a lot of skill. Madara gave a little prideful smirk, well I may be old, but I'm still smarter than any of the other little shits who worked at United Sharingan Defense. Orochimaru had few syringes in his hands now, that's good to know. So I'm going to give you your typical shots, nothing new this time. Good, those things make me feel awful, Madara said a scowl on his face. Orochimaru was trying to find a good vein to use on Madara, well I'll do my best to make sure you don't feel too sick. As Orochimaru put the needle into his arm, Madara decided it was time to put his plan in action, did you know that I asked for you specifically? Orochimaru looked surprised as he pulled the first syringe out and got the next one ready, really? Now why did you do that? Because I've heard some very interesting things about you, Madara explained. Orochimaru put the next syringe in, like what? Madara was going to enjoy this, you see, I've got some men that worked for me whose past I had purposely erased. 
They'd done some things that weren't well appreciated by the police but they were still valuable enough where I didn't want to lose them. So I had given them new identities. Of course this meant they had to assume the new identities, so no they longer had a family. One of these men had go to the hospital and you ended up being the one who treated him. Orochimaru's heartbeat start to speed up, is that so? Madara could see he'd gotten Orochimaru's attention, yes, but we never did see him again after that. So how do you know it was me who treated him? Orochimaru asked nervously. Madara knew he'd ask that, because when one of my employees go missing, I look into it. My private investigator found out a lot about you and I must say, you've got some very interesting hobbies Orochimaru. Orochimaru's mind was racing. This old son of bitch knew exactly what he was doing. He needed to think. There must have been something that he could do to make sure he wouldn't talk. Madara could already tell what was going on inside Orochimaru's head. Just so we're clear, I have no problem with what you're doing. Orochimaru blinked a couple of times out of confusion. What do you mean? Madara had him hooked and he knew it. I happen to respect what you're doing. It's barbaric. Cough. Cough that we're not trying everything we can to make humans live longer. Ethical and humane are just words cowards use to keep people like us from becoming immortal. Orochimaru was shocked that Madara saw things his way, needs to see someone else understands. Madara wasn't lying about this either. He believed Orochimaru was totally justified to be doing what he was doing. After all, if humans could find a way to live longer, why not? It was time to make Orochimaru the offer so I'm going to guess you've heard about the troubles plaguing my family's company as of late. Orochimaru knew about it all right, just about every person in the world has heard about it. When a company that big goes under, it's pretty much national news. Fair enough, I know without our old military contracts we're going to be broke within the year. However, the Uchiha cannot die like that, I simply won't allow it, Madara said with determination. Orochimaru injected Madara with the last syringe, so then what are you going to do? Madara had been planning this for quite some time, I used crime to save this company once, and now I'm gonna use crime to save it again. Orochimaru couldn't help but be intrigued, you used crime to save United Sharingan defense. Madara gave him a small nod, I did indeed. Murder isn't something I typically have to do, but business is business. Since our business can no longer be war, I've decided it's going to be crime. I'm going to use the power my company's got left and take over the greatest criminal organization Konoha has ever seen. What in the hell are you talking about and what does any of this have to do with me? Orochimaru asked, as he was completely lost. Madara could see it was time to stop beating around the bush, I told you before that I erased my employees past when I needed to. Well that wasn't completely true, as I couldn't do it completely by myself. It took the help of someone named Yagura, the king of falsifying doents, to it. He's called a king because he's a member of the Nine Kings, Konoha's top criminal organization. Orochimaru had heard of them before, I know about the organization, but I've never heard of Yagura himself. Madara waved it off, not important, what is important is that I intend to use my intelligence and what's left of my company's power to take over the Nine Kings. Before I die, which in my shape will be soon, I'm going to overthrow the Nine Kings and replace them with people I know I can trust. They'll take orders from my successors and the money they make will be laundered into United Sharingan Defense. With that money, this company will never be at risk of dying ever again. Orochimaru still didn't understand what was going on, why are telling me all this? I'm getting to that, Madara snapped, I can't get this done on my own but I also don't want any of my successors do my bidding in case the worst should happen and we get caught. Orochimaru had been wondering, you keep mentioning these successors, but who are they? Madara realized he'd forgotten to explain that part, another Uchiha of course. One of my sons would have been ideal, but they're all dead. One of my grandsons perhaps, although Obito's never been one for business and Fugaku, well he's no longer with us. I think I'll go with one of my great-grandsons, Sasuke or Itachi. Orochimaru was sorry he asked, talk about a drawn-out explanation. So you don't want you successors to get caught? Does that mean you want me to be the one who does all your bidding? You really are a smart one. You'll do every little thing I ask of you, and in exchange I'll see to it that you get funding that can be used for your experiments. 
Madara said, finally putting his offer on the table. Orochimaru could hardly believe it. He finally had the chance to get some real funding. I've done so much already, just imagine how much more I could do with some extra money. Madara reminded him, you only get the money if you do what I ask. Based on your reaction, I assume you have a deal. Orochimaru took Madara's hand and shook it, yes, we have a deal. Flashback end. It may have been a Y job, but Orochimaru would do as Madara asked of him until he had that precious cash in his hands. He picked up his phone and began to dial, time to get the next phase of this plan into action. Naruto laid with a blissful smile next to his lover. Their bodies were covered only by a thin sheet. They'd just woken up after a night of pure passion and both of them felt totally satisfied. It was strange though, for Naruto one of the best parts was just the feeling of Fu's warm body next to his and her head on his shoulder. Fu was using her finger to make little circles on Naruto's chest, that was just incredible. Naruto gave her a kiss on the top of the head, it always is with you. Much as I'd love to just lay here, why don't you get up so that I can make the two of us a late breakfast? Fu pulled the sheets off from her, I'd love to, but I've gotta go home get changed for my meeting with my uncle. I'm supposed to have lunch with him. Naruto couldn't help but take in Fu's beautiful body, oh come, you've got time to eat. Fu started to put on the clothes she'd worn the night before, no, I really don't. I've gotta get cleaned up and put on some fresh clothes. Naruto tried to reason with her, you can shower here and just wear the clothes you wore last night. Fu looked at him like he was crazy, I'm not going to see my uncle in dirty clothes. Naruto stood up and cupped Fu's face in his hands. He gave her a long passionate kiss, both of them letting out a little moan. When he pulled away he said, please stay, just stay for a while. Fu felt awful about leaving, believe me, I really do wanna stick around but I just can't. I've got nothing here to change into. Why don't you leave some stuff over here? Naruto suggested some clothes and a toothbrush, stuff like that. You can stay overnight and not have to leave first thing in morning for once. Fu gave Naruto a mischievous smirk, that's a pretty big step Naruto. You sound like you're really starting to care about me. Naruto wasn't arguing, you're the only girl I've had for the past year. Oh course I care about you. To be fair, we do an awful lot, Fu commented. Naruto couldn't help but smile at the memories, yes we do. So will you leave some stuff here next time? Fu gave him a little kiss on the cheek, I'd be happy to. You'd better make me a pretty great breakfast next I come here. You're about to see just how good of a cook I really am, Naruto said as she walked away. Fu left the bedroom and went to Naruto's front door, alright, I'll see you later Naruto. Naruto sighed as she closed the door, see you later, you sexy green haired vixen. Fu really did have a meeting she had to get to. She was going to see her uncle Kakuzu, one of the most powerful men in the world of crime. Kakuzu may not have been one of the nine kings, but there was still no one in Konoha who would touch him. They needed him far too much to do that. Kakuzu was very important in Konoha's underworld because lended money to criminals exclusively. It was cash that couldn't be traced and you didn't need a background check to get. However, it was also very risky to get a loan from him. When you borrowed money from him, the interest rates were extremely high and if you were even a day late in paying him back he'd do just about every horrible thing but kill you. If you didn't get his money within the week, that's when things got rather macabre. He'd earned the nickname the Demon of Hearts because he would tear out someone's heart and sell it on the black market to make up for the money they owed him. He got at least some of his money back and it made people terrified of him, the perfect combo. The only strange thing about him, well besides that he ripped people's hearts out, was no one had a clue where he got the cash from. Kakuzu, even in the beginning, seemed to have a limitless amount of money that he would just pull out of thin air. They didn't have a clue where he stored it, how much he actually had, and what he did with it other than lend it to people. He'd survived much longer than the average person in the criminal underworld, as he was 78 years old. Even though he was that old, he still tried to keep himself up and moving as much as possible. The moment you stopped moving was the moment you died. Kakuzu had kept himself alive by trusting absolutely no one and caring about no one, well, except for one person. The Demon of Hearts was currently waiting for his niece, 
Fu, in his dimly lit office. He had his guards all around him, but they were relatively bored since all of them trusted Fu. Kakuzu always had guards around, just to be safe. There was Hidan, a psycho who people often joked was immortal because of all the close calls he'd survived, Sasori, who was the person who had taught Konkuro about poisons and he honestly feared the boy had surpassed him, and Pakura, a pyromaniac who Kakuzu honestly found father amusing. Honestly, she was the only one he actually liked. While he'd been thinking about all this, there was a knock at his door. He instinctively called out, come in. The door opened and his lovely green-haired niece walked in, hey Uncle Kakuzu. I see you're still a damn vampire. Kakuzu knew she was talking about how dim he kept it, did you wanna get better view of my wrinkled old face or my black wiry hair? Fu walked over and gave her uncle a loving kiss on the forehead, I was just picking at you, that's all. Kakuzu gave a little laugh at his niece's attitude, you're the only person who can pick at me without getting killed you know. Fu sat down across from him, yeah, I know. So what did you get us for lunch? Kakuzu pulled a couple of takeout boxes from under his desk, I got you a chicken salad from that place down the block that you like and got myself a cheeseburger. Fu shook her head as she opened her salad, those damn things are gonna kill you. Either those are the cigars you smoke anyways. I'm 78 years old, I don't give a anymore. Kakuzu shot back, Fu couldn't argue with that. I guess you've earned the right to do what you want at this point. Kakuzu had earned it all right, damn straight little girl. Besides, I still work out from time to time. So what's be going on with you? Fu took a bite of her salad and said, well Naruto wants me to start leaving stuff at his place so that we can spend more time together. Kakuzu had started to dig into his cheeseburger, well that's good. It's funny though. I can remember a time just a few years ago when you came in ranting about how you hated the guy. Fu couldn't believe he still remembered that, we argued a lot, but that was mainly because I didn't like him being in charge. Kakuzu raised an eyebrow, you don't like anybody but yourself to be in charge. Fu wanted to disagree, but she didn't have a leg to stand on, no I don't. Still, Naruto didn't take any of my shit. When we'd argue he'd fight right back. One time we were arguing really hard, I don't even remember what it was about anymore, and he'd brought his face right up next to mine. Something about the fight in his eyes and the fact that he wasn't backing down, it was all just kind of sexy. Kakuzu looked up from his food, that doesn't sound weird at all. Fu gave him a playful smack on the shoulder, shut up. The next thing I knew we were in bed together. Naruto wasn't a jerk about it either, in fact he was really sweet the morning after. He even said that if I didn't want him to tell anyone about what happened that he wouldn't. After that I couldn't deny that he was a good guy who was really just trying to do what was best for the Nine Kings. I stopped being stubborn and before I knew it, we were in an honest to goodness relationship. Very sweet, in a bloody criminal type of way, Kakuzu noted. Fu almost spit out her salad she found that so funny, yeah, we're not exactly Romeo and Juliet. Kakuzu wiped his mouth with a napkin. So how is Naruto doing? Fu's demeanor changed a little bit at that, he's doing okay, but it's looking like someone might be coming after the kings. Kakuzu wasn't expecting something like that at all, who in the has the balls to do that? Fu wished she knew, hell if I know, but they'd better have a damn army then. Kakuzu had finished up his cheeseburger so he tossed the box in the trash, if they're taking you guys on, then that would be the case. There was another knock on the door and Pakura went to see who it was. She cracked the door open just enough to talk to who it was then turned to Kakuzu, it's Sakin and he doesn't have the money. It's been 8 days sir. Kakuzu got up from his desk, Fu, would you excuse me for a moment? Fu knew what was coming, I'm gonna go make a few quick calls in the other room. I love you to death, but the this part just creeps the hell out me. Kakuzu watched her go into the lounge, which was just to the side of the office and then opened the door to let Sakin in, so you're 8 days late with your payments? Sakin got on his knees, please Kakuzu, you have to understand that position I'm in. They're just not buying anything I'm selling, if you just give me a month. Kakuzu grabbed Sakin's hair threw him onto the ground, a month. That's not how this works and you know it. One way or another, I'm getting my money. Sakin tried to crawl away, you can have anything else. My liver, my kidney just not my heart. Kakuzu picked up a hammer off from his desk, 
I'm going to enjoy my visit with my niece. In the meantime, you're going to take a little nap and my friends here will prep you for surgery. Sakin just kept begging, we can work something out. Kakuzu raised up his hammer, no, we can't. He smacked Sakin over the head with a hammer just hard enough to knock him unconscious. Then he turned to Sasori, keep him knocked out for the next few hours. I'm going to spend a couple more hours with Fu. Sasori and Pakura picked him up and started to move him while he dan grinned, I love working for that crazy mother. Naruto decided that since he couldn't have a late breakfast with his favorite girl, he'd go and get a bite to eat with an old friend of his. It was a win-win, since who he was visiting just might be the only person smart enough to figure out what was going on with Nine Kings. He picked up some food for the two of them and headed to last place on earth you'd ever expect a criminal to go. A retired police officer's house. Naruto walked up to the front door of a pleasant little house and rung the doorbell. Before long an old man with with long white hair answered the door, Naruto, what a nice surprise. Oh, and it looks like you brought a little food too. What's the occasion? Naruto gave the old man a quick hug, hey Jiraiya, I just came to ask you a few questions. Since I was gonna come here, I figured why not make it fun. Jiraiya smacked him on the back and the two walked inside, any excuse to get you over here is good enough for me. Naruto was glad to have Jiraiya to talk to about all this. Kakashi was a great detective and Shikamaru was like a genius, but Jiraiya was the master of deductive reasoning. The man could give Sherlock Holmes a run for his money. He'd been one of Konoha's finest detectives in his prime, but now he'd retired a long time ago. Now he just gave advice to his friends, even if he didn't always approve of their actions. He was actually worried about Naruto's actions at the moment. So are these things you need to ask me about related to the Nine Kings? Naruto cringed at the question, yes, they are. Jiraiya sighed and took the food from Naruto, setting on the table, Naruto, what you're doing is wrong. How many times do I have to say it? Naruto didn't know what to tell him, we're a lot better than most criminals you know. Gara only takes hits out on people he feels earned it, Fu makes sure her animals are treated well. Yugito rips off people off of money that could have gone into the economy, Yugura makes don'ts that let criminals run free, Roshi helps pay off juries and rap victims, Jirei fired back, need I go on. Naruto got out some ramen, Tiyuchi's signature dish, and gave Jiraiya one of the two bowls, if you don't like it then why don't you just turn me in. Jiraiya didn't feel that was the answer, throwing you in prison won't do any good. You would either get life in prison or be put away for so long that you wouldn't have even a chance of a normal life when you got out, and that's if you made a deal. That's not what I want and that's not what your father would have wanted. Naruto hung his head in irritation, I've said it once and I'll say it again, my father's not here. Don't try pulling my mom out either, because she's gone too. Jiraiya should have known that wouldn't work, I guess you're tired of hearing about him huh? You don't even know that half of it. Everyone who knows who my dad was just loves to brag about how he was this great hero and was like Konoha's own personal white knight. I get it, he was awesome, but I'm not him, Naruto said as he prepared to chow down on his favorite meal. Jiraiya just kind of poked at his food, your father was the closest thing I've ever had to a son. I guess I just want what's best for the closest thing I've ever had to a grandson. Naruto stopped mid-bite, look. I appreciate all that you're doing for me but I just like things the way they are. Can we please just focus on the issue with the Nine Kings and talk about this some other day? Jiraiya could live with that, I suppose that'll have to do. So, what exactly are these problems of yours? Naruto then proceeded to tell him all about the things that had happened the day before. All about him being called in and the mysterious doctor. He even told him about the Yugito accusing Han of betraying them. The more Jiraiya heard, the deeper he began to think. Once Naruto was all done talking, he began to draw his conclusions, well I must say, it was a very brilliant first move to make. Naruto could have told him that already, okay, I was hoping for a little more than that. Jiraiya supposed that was kind of vague, I'll try to explain. This call served three purpose. First, it got all of the king's attention. That's why he went after you someone who affect all nine of the kings. Second, it got the kings wondering about one another. Just look at the way Yugito talked about Han. Last but not least, 
they got got the police looking at you. Well the last part must have backfired, because I told Kurenai to file a complaint against Yamato, Naruto told him. Jiraiya had heard about that, yeah, Yamato called me and told me about that. He was really pissed too. Thing is, I think that's exactly what this guy was hoping you'd do. Naruto just gave him a funny look, um, what? He was hoping you'd do something that would force the cops to stop chasing after you, Jiraiya explained, realizing that he was once again being vague. Naruto hated trying to follow Jiraiya's line of thought sometimes, if this guy was trying to take us out, why in the hell wouldn't he want the cops chase us? Jiraiya was going to have to explain himself clearly for once, based on what he's done, I don't think this guy wants you all taken down. If it were that simple he would have just killed you already. Sounds like what he want is your jobs, and it'll be a lot easier to get them if the cops aren't around. Naruto had to admit, this didn't seem like someone out for revenge, that actually makes a lot of sense. If payback was what they wanted then the phone call really wouldn't have made any sense. Jiraiya could see he'd figured it all out, you're dealing with some who's incredibly smart. If this is his first move, then he's got something big planned up ahead. Naruto really didn't like the sound of that, so what do we do? What do I tell the Nine Kings to do? Jiraiya could only think of one thing to tell them, the best thing you guys can do right now is stick together. I really can't stress that enough. If you start fighting amongst one another then it's all over. Naruto could see what he was talking about, I think that you're right, but some of the kings won't make that easy. Yugito and Yugura are gonna be a problem, I can tell you that right now. Those two don't trust anyone, plus Yudakata doesn't really like Han. Jiraiya finished up his ramen and set it to the side, if you kept better company you wouldn't have to worry about all this. Naruto gave Jiraiya a little glare, can you please just leave it be for now? Fine but I'm not gonna rest until I've got you on the right side, Jiraiya told him a little bit sternly. Naruto ate last of his food as well, whatever you say grandpa. Jiraiya just gave the boy a gentle smile, I hope you weren't trying to insult me when you said that. If we're being honest, I love it. Naruto tried to keep himself from smiling too, but he just couldn't, whatever. Dot you wanna watch a movie or something? Jiraiya didn't see why not, sounds great. Let's go see if we can't find something good. Han had been busy covering his ass ever since the meeting with the Nine Kings. Thanks to that damn call, there was no way that he could sell any stolen art he had at the moment. People had heard about Naruto getting called in and questioned about the art, which was all it took for people not to touch anything Han had. All of his usual clients took the questioning to mean that the cops were looking at him and that made selling anything nearly impossible. Han was in his apartment on the phone with one of his clients right now trying to convince him everything was okay, I'm telling you, there's nothing to worry about. This is just a little storm that's gonna blow over and then I'll get you the peace, alright. A some kind of response was heard on the other side and Han looked relieved, that's fantastic, thank you so much Sai. I promise that we'll be in contract very soon. Didera could see his boss was in a lot of distress right now. Sorry you have to deal with all this man, I know it's gotta. Doesn't begin to cover it, Han stated, I've got a decent amount of cash saved up so hopefully I won't have to go crawling to Kakuzu for a loan. Didera tried to console him, at least it really couldn't get much worse. Han heard a knock on the door and went to answer it, I hope you're right, because I really don't feel like putting up with any more of this. He opened the door to see a very angry man standing in front of him, can I help you sir? The man slipped past Han and started to look around his apartment, yeah, you can explain to me why my art's not hanging up in a museum and getting the recognition it deserves. Han was already having a bad a feeling about this, look, whoever you are, I really don't know what you're talking about. The man turned to Han, the name is Otoko, and don't you dare bullshit me. I know you're the one who had my painting stolen before it could be hung up in the museum. Han could see this wasn't going to end well. So Otoko, do you have any proof that I stole your painting? Otoko got right up in Han's face, I got a call from some guy, he wouldn't say his name, that told me you have something that belongs to me. I'm not leaving until you tell me where my painting is, and I will call the cops if you aren't quick about it. Han shoved the man away, this is my home. If I wanna throw your ass out of here I will. Otoko wasn't taking no for an answer, 
even if throw me out, you won't be able to throw out the entire Konoha police department. There was only one thing left for Han to do, then I guess you've left me no choice. Just keep in mind, I didn't want things to go down this way. It suddenly became very apparent to Otoko just how much larger Han was than him. Hey now, I didn't mean to offend. Otoko didn't finish the sentence, as Han had already smacked him hard in the mouth and then even harder on his temple. Needless to say, Otoko wouldn't be waking up for a while. Han leaned down and took the phone off from Otoko, at least he's not bleeding. That means I don't have to clean anything up. Didera looked at the unconscious artist, so what do you want to do with him? Han had been thinking over that very thing, kill him, but don't do it here. Find a way to make sure the body won't be found. Didera was wondering why he took the phone, what are you gonna do with that? Han put it in his pocket, give it to Naruto so that he can give it to his people. Mr. Artist here said that someone called him and told him that I had his painting. If someone really did call him I'll bet that Naruto can find out who. At least I hope he can, or I'm going to look very suspicious. Didera hadn't thought about that, this guy really seems to wanna with you. Han had already gotten out his own phone, let's just hope my friend believe me about all this. Have fun with the body. Didera was already moving it, I'm going to turn this third-rate hack into true art. I knew it, you're playing us like some cheap violin, Yugito screamed as Han finished telling his story to other kings. Naruto had wanted to get the kings together as soon as Han had called him. As far as he was concerned, this was the next move of whoever was after the them. Yugito though it was something else entirely, and Han wasn't happy about it, what do I have to gain from this? If this crap keeps up, my cash flow is gonna be non-existent. Naruto, will you talk some sense into her? Naruto had just gotten there thanks to his meeting with Jiraiya, who was in the same boat but with her uncle Kakuzu, and he was not looking forward to jumping into this pile of shit, he's right Yugito, there's nothing he gains from this. I wouldn't be so quick to say that, Yugura said, cutting off Naruto, whenever an artist dies, the price of his art skyrockets. How do we know Han didn't set this all up so that he could kill Otoko and get more for his painting? Han was insulted, I wouldn't do something like that. We all agreed, no unnecessary death that would bring trouble onto the Nine Kings. Maybe this is all just a ruse so that you could kill him and your fellow kings couldn't punish you. Yutakata suggested. Han looked like steam was about to come out of his ears, after everything I've done for you people, you're gonna turn on me at the slightest hint of trouble. I can't believe you pricks. Fu was on Han's side, do you guys know how crazy you all sound? There's no way Han would do all this for a little extra cash. It's not like he was hard up for money, in fact he didn't start losing money until all this got started. The extra cash he'd make from the painting wouldn't make up for the money he's lost. Yugito still wasn't convinced, maybe he's just an idiot. Han clenched his fist in rage, why you stuck up little? Naruto couldn't believe Yugito said that, damn it Yugito, there's no reason to talk like that. You, Yugura, and Yutakata have not reason not to trust Han. These accusations are ridiculous. I had Han take Otoko's phone to Shikamaru after he called me and guess what Shikamaru found. Otoko did get a call from a prepaid cell phone, which means we can't track it. Yutakata didn't see why that mattered, so what? The first call was made from a couple of druggies' phones. If Han wanted to kill Otoko, why would he bother to call him and have the guy show up at his apartment? He could just kill him and get rid of the body so that we'd never even know he killed the guy, Naruto reasoned. Be wrapped, hey yo. On this, I am with Naruto. Gara saw the logic in it too, everything you're accusing Han of makes little to no sense. You should all think this through more before opening your mouths. Yagura figured they'd better just move on, okay then Naruto. Why do you think this guy switched from using other people's phones to just using a prepaid? Naruto was pretty sure he had an answer for that too, because we couldn't have tracked down a prepaid phone. This guy wants us to know he's coming for us. He wants us scared and fighting each other so that he can get us weak. If we're not careful he'll just wait till we're at our weakest and then make us his bitch. Now all of you, get back to your people and make sure everything you've got is secure. Something tells me things are only gonna get worse from here. All have seemed to be watching each other closely, but left to do as Naruto said. 
Fu was the only one who walked up to Naruto with a bag over her shoulder, so you ready to take me to your place. Don't forget, you need to work up my appetite for that breakfast you promised me. Naruto felt weak in the knees, man you're awesome. It had been a lonely night for a young dark haired man by the name of Zaku. He was sitting alone in a bar, trying to drink himself into oblivion. His finance kin had kicked him out two nights ago because she found out that he'd ed one of the stripers from his bachelor party. It didn't help that he'd slapped her on his way out. Right now his only friend was the bartender who made sure that his glass was always filled with brandy on the rocks. He downed another drink and sighed, you get drunk in one piece of strange and all of the sudden you're the devil. I tell ya man, women. Another young man with brown hair sat down next to him and asked, would you feel the same way if she'd been the one who cheated on you? Zaku responded with a slur, hey, I can keep my woman satisfied and in line. Who do you think you are anyways? Butting into my business. My name is Konkuro, the brown haired man said as he pulled out his wallet, and I'm just a guy who wanted someone to talk to. Zaku could care less about talking, well why don't you go and off? All you're gonna do is kill my buzz. Konkuro pulled out a $50 bill and put it on the counter, I was hoping to help your buzz, if you'll let me anyways. Zaku had a very quick change of heart, I guess a little company couldn't hurt. So what did you wanna talk about? Konkuro's phone went off and he started to pull it out of his pocket, well both of us seemed to enjoy the company of beautiful women. I suppose that would we could talk about. Zaku watched the bartender fill his glass back up, beautiful women just so happen to be my favorite topic. Do you get a ton of? Back before I got a fiancé I did. I did okay for myself, but I've got a serious girlfriend now, Konkuro said before he dropped his phone, damn it. Zaku bent down to pick it up, giving Konkuro a split second to slip something in his drink, I'll get that for you. You'd better be careful or you're gonna bust this thing. Konkuro had to fight from smiling as Zaku handed him the phone. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have to replace this thing. Looks like I got a text from my girlfriend. She wants me to go see a movie with her. Zaku hated to see the man who was paying for his drinks go, but you just got here man. Konkuro waited until Zaku took a sip of his drink and then said, Oh well, what you gonna do? Just keep the 50, I'll buy your drinks for the night. Zaku wasn't about to argue with that, well shit man, thanks. Konkuro just started to walk out of the bar, don't worry about it. You're clearly having a rough day, so drink that brandy like it's your last. Once Konkuro was out of the bar, he pulled out his phone to call his brother, Higara, it's your bro. Zaku's gonna be dead before the morning's up. The herbs I used will make it look like he died of alcohol poisoning and the coroner won't be able to tell there was any foul play. Gara had a lot of respect for his brother's abilities and always made sure to acknowledge, nice job Konkuro. Kin was willing to pay a king's ransom to see that bastard get what was coming to him. Konkuro was glad he could give Gara some good news, because now he had to ask the hard question, so did you or any of the other kings figure out who the traitor was? Gara wished desperately that he could say yes, no, none of them found even the slightest indication that anyone who works for them was the traitor. Most of the kings didn't even mention Han's painting to anyone. Konkuro was hoping this could just be over already, well that s. Is there any chance that one of them could be lying? Gara had already looked into that, I had Tamari do some snooping around. All of the kings did exactly what Naruto asked them to do. Konkuro hated how complicated this whole thing was becoming, Naruto better find this guy fast. Lord knows how long we've got before he moves on from Han and starts attacking the other kings. Gara was fearing that exactly same thing, just be patient and have faith in Naruto. I'm sure he'll figure out who our oppressor is soon. I've gotta go Konkuro, but just sit tight for now. Konkuro said goodbye and hung up the phone, fine, I'll sit tight. Let's just wait and see who's next in this guy's hit list. Good luck to that poor sap. Yagura had been rather pissed off when Naruto texted him and accused his men of being traitors. However, there wasn't anyone in the Nine Kings dumb enough to cross Naruto. Doing that would end up putting a person six feet under. Even though he hated doing it, Yagura looked over every single person in his organization who had information that could screw over Han. None of them were the traitor, just as he'd expected. When Yagura saw Naruto again, 
he gonna give him a piece of his mind. The king of falsified doents was in his office right now, thinking over how he was going to handle all of the issues he was facing right now. He was still convinced that Han was trying to screw the other kings over. Yagura didn't believe that there was any doctor or traitor causing problems for the nine kings. No, it was just Han being a fool and Naruto being too trusting. It was going to take something pretty big to change Yagura's mind about this, and as fate would have it, something pretty big was about to happen. Zabuza and Kisame knocked on the office door and went inside. Zabuza seemed pretty nervous. Um Yagura, we've got a bit of a problem. Yagura groaned, oh great, another ing thing to worry about. Well, lay it on me. What the hell is it now? Kisame pulled out some papers and handed them to Yagura. Well sir, the bank just sent us a some papers to confirm some transactions you were supposed to have made. Yagura looked over the paper, I never made any of these withdrawals. Not a single one of them. Zabuza already knew that, well yeah, I kind of figured that out already. With all the various withdrawals, this guy took out a total of $304,562. Yagura nearly had a heart attack when he heard that, what? Kisame had never seen Yagura this mad, now just calm down man. Yagura snapped, calm down. I just lost over $300,000. Zabuza didn't know what to say. Look, in a situation like this, we've gotta make sure we're thinking straight. Yagura just kept yelling, how did they do it? How did these sons of bitches manage to get that much of my money? Kisame didn't know how to tell him this, he he, you're not gonna believe this. Yagura glared at him, try me. Kisame gulped, well sir, they got into your account by using, falsified doents. Yagura's eye started to twitch with rage, falsified doents. They used my own skill against me to steal my hard-earned cash. Zabuza was starting to get a little scared of his boss, as much as I'd love to sugarcoat it, that's pretty much exactly what happened. This guy had a bunch of dointation that let him get into your account. He was smart enough to go to the banks where you'd never been seen in person too. Yagura didn't understand, the only person who could make a fake doint good enough to do something like this is me. I can't think of anyone else that would even be able to come close to pulling this off. Kisame had thought about that, you've got a point, but is there any chance that someone could take an old doant you falsified and mess with it so that it can be used against you? Yagura thought about it for a second, well, it's not a complete impossibility. They'd need to have a lot of business experience to know how make the right changes though. Zabuza had to suggest, hey, do you think that this could be the same guy that's messing with Han? Yagura hadn't thought about that, a doctor just might have business knowledge to figure something like this out, or he may at least know the right people to do it for him. Kisame really wasn't sure if he should say this, so does that mean that you believe Han? Do you think that there really is someone coming after the kings? Yagura hated to admit it, as much as I dislike the taste of crow, this does make it seem like Han was telling the truth. What the hell does the taste of crow have to do with anything? Kisame asked. Zabuza gave his partner a funny look, really? That's what you got out of that sentence. Things like this didn't even throw Yagura off anymore, it just means that I'm admitting I'm wrong Kisame. Kisame felt kind of dumb, oh, well why didn't you just say that? Yagura smacked his forehead, for the love of God, will you two just leave so that I can call Naruto? Kisame and Zabuza could see that it was time to make their exit, of course sir, just call us if you need us. Yagura sighed as got out his phone, I swear, if those two weren't so good at killing people. Naruto had been in bed when he got the call for Yagura and he was actually pretty happy about it, for a couple of reasons. First, this was proof that Han wasn't lying and that someone really was taking on the kings. Second, this was actually a pretty decent lead to go off from. All they had to do now was figure out which one of Yagura's clients was the problem. Yagura wasn't nearly as happy about all this. The only thing he cared about was that he'd lost a shit ton of money. Naruto promised Yagura that he'd do whatever he could to get him his money back, and he'd have to be very careful with what cash he had until then. He might have to go and see Kakuzu, who wouldn't cut him a deal even if he was Fu's friend. It was just a few hours after the call and Naruto was in the back of his restaurant right now which was where he ran all of his questionable business out of, talking to his assistant Hanada Hayuga. 
Hanada was the heiress of Byakugan Investments, a company that used their knowledge about the stock market to buy and sell shares of various companies. For a long time they were the second biggest company in Konoha, but they were top dog now that United Sharingan Defense was going under. Hanada was working her way through college right now and she managed Naruto's restaurant along with a couple other businesses to get some money and a little bit of experience. She made sure to be at the restaurant every time that Naruto was there. While she did know that Naruto was crazy about Fu, Hanada just couldn't help be crazy about him. Naruto was a great guy, even if he was a criminal. Yes, Hanada knew that Naruto was a criminal, and she even knew he was the head of the Nine Kings. Hanada had been going through Naruto's cash flow long enough to tell he was taking in more money than he should be. No small town restaurant did this well, which meant he had to be laundering money. It became all the more noticeable when she started working for a couple of his friends and found they were doing the same thing. Hanada eventually managed to work up the courage to confront Naruto about it, and he didn't even bother to, to deny it. In fact, he even told her the entire truth about the real way he made most of his money. Naruto felt Hanada was too smart to do something as stupid as ratting on him. He was right too, as Hanada just couldn't bring herself to turn him in. Naruto was telling Hanada his plan of action, the first thing I did was have Yugura take all of the money out his accounts so that this guy can't get to it again. Hanada knew there was logic in that, we don't want him to lose any more of his money than he already has, now do we? Naruto was pacing a little bit, no, we don't. So now that I've got that done, I'm gonna have my guys find the bank's tellers who handled the transactions. There's no guarantee that they'll remember the guy or that he handled all this stuff himself, but it's worth a shot. Hanada asked him the obvious question, so what if that doesn't work and you still can't find him? Naruto was really hoping it didn't come to that, then we're gonna have to go through almost every single person that Yugura's ever sold a fake dough into, just to see what we can find. For all we know this guy could have bought those damn papers years ago, so even that is a long shot. Hanada didn't like their odds on this, you seem awfully excited about this so called, long shot. Why are you so happy if we've got so little to work with? A little is all I'm gonna need with the team I've got, Naruto said confidently, if I tell them to do everything I just told you about, I'm positive they'll at least be able to give me something I can work with. Hanada did know that Naruto's team was damn good so the air you going to call the kings now? Naruto felt it was too soon, no, I need to think it through a little bit more. The plan isn't perfected enough for me to bet the lives of those I care about on it. Hanada couldn't stop herself from frowning a little bit, yes, you need to make sure your lover is safe, don't you? Naruto knew about Hanada's feelings for him, come on Hanada, you know that I care about you too, the two of us would just never have worked out. Hanada had heard this speech too many times, I'm not an idiot Naruto. I know that Fu is prettier than I am and that you don't find me attractive. Naruto couldn't let her think that, what the hell are you talking about Hanada? You're one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Don't get me wrong, for me Fu will always be the most gorgeous girl in the world, but you're amazing too. Not to be rude here, but you've got some of the best and one of the nicest asses I've ever seen. Top that off with a pretty face and you've got yourself one hell of a woman. Hanada blushed at the way he was talking about her, oh, um, thank you Naruto. That's very sweet. Naruto gave her a toothy grin, don't mention it. By the way, could you not tell Fu about everything I just said? She'd kick my ass for saying stuff like that. Hanada supposed she could do that, don't worry Naruto, it'll be our little secret. Of course I'll have to get a raise in my paycheck at the end of the week. Naruto put his hand on Hanada's shoulder and laughed, you're beautiful, smart, and funny. Trust me Hanada, you're gonna attract a great guy one of these days. He's just not gonna be me. Hanada was both filled with pride and sadness, you're a really nice guy Naruto, even if HWAT you do is considered a crime. Naruto scratched the back of his head, I have my moments. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some friends to go and see. Hanada was very sad to see him go. Naruto was such a good guy, why couldn't he be single? Oh well, she knew deep down that Naruto was right and she needed to move on. Fu and Naruto weren't breaking up anytime soon, so she was gonna have to find her own man. Who knew, 
maybe it would even be another one of the kings. Kakashi nearly jumped for joy when Naruto called him and told him about the new lead he'd gotten on the mysterious doctor. After being absolutely lost for so long, it felt great to have something real to go off from. He'd gotten Rin as soon as he could and they started to head right to the closest bank where one of the withdrawals had been made from. Rin gave Kakashi a little bit of a conversation in the car, mostly thanking him for his help with Naruto, and the two detectives managed to get to the bank very quickly. It was a pretty small place and the parking lot was almost totally empty. Kakashi doubted that the place would have security cameras, but he remained hopeful. Once they got inside, Kakashi and Rin found that the bank's outside looked nothing its inside. The inside of the bank was rather high-end and it clearly had extremely high security. It looked like a small fortress, with guards and vaults all around. Somehow, it didn't surprise Kakashi that this was the, the kind of place Yugura stored his money. It was under the radar, but still very safe. It really doesn't surprise me that this is the kind of place where Yugura keeps his money, Kakashi said to Rin. Rin could see what he meant, yeah, this place is perfect for him. Completely under the radar, but still very safe. He can hide a lot of money without too many eyes looking at it. Kakashi nodded and walked up to the teller, showing her his badge, excuse me ma'am, I'm Detective Hitaki and this is Detective Nohara. We're with the Konoha Police Department and we were wondering if we could ask you a few quick questions about a transaction that occurred here a couple of days ago. The woman smiled bright at him. Like most bank tellers she'd been trained to be friendly to everyone who came in. Of course, as long as it doesn't involve any privileged in information, you can ask anything you like. Rin couldn't see privileged information being a problem. Is there any chance you remember a man by the name of Yugura stopping in here? The woman grinned. Of course I remember him. His coming in was a bit of an event actually. Despite how much cash he keeps here, we've never had the pleasure of seeing him in person. Kakashi got a little excited, is there any chance that you could describe the man to us? Hair color, height, stuff like that. The woman thought for a second, well, he was about average height, had shortish white hair, and he was kind of skinny. Oh yeah, and he had these huge round glasses too. Rin couldn't imagine a guy like that should be too hard to find, sounds like a pretty hard guy to miss. Now, do you guys have security cameras that saw the guy coming and going? The woman gave him a sympathetic look, sorry, our security tapes are erased every 24 hours so that we can record new ones. Recording a full a day of footage takes up a lot of memory, so we only bother to save it if anything really unusual happens. Kakashi really couldn't fault them there, fair enough. I suppose your description will be enough. Thanks for your help. The woman gave them a quick wave goodbye, not a problem detective, have a nice day. Kakashi and Rin walked out and Rin had a small smile on her face, well that was easy. I mean there's no way that Yagura would forget someone like that. Kakashi had to remind her, that's assuming that whoever it is that's after the kings actually went in there himself. He could have sent someone else. Rin was still optimistic. Well he should be an easy guy to track down either way. The guy sounded pretty conspicuous looking. On that, she and Kakashi could agree, yeah, let's go see if Yugura remembers anyone like that. While the detectives were busy chasing their leads, Madara was setting up the next phase of his plan. He was of course the one who modified the papers that Orochimaru had used to rob Yugura blind. All the old man had to was find the paper Yugura had given him years ago and make some simple changes to them. Well, they were simple to Madara, but they wouldn't have been all that simple to anyone else. Now that he had the kings running around like chickens with their heads cut off, he had to get in contact with his family. Madara had to be certain that this plan actually had a chance of working before he told anyone about it, as he didn't want to look like a fool. Once he was sure, he called up his grandson Obito, even though he likely wouldn't be interested, and his great-grandson Sasuke and Itachi. Sasuke and Itachi were Fukugu's sons, and they'd lost both their parents at a young age when their father killed their mother and then himself. Madara had no clue what the two of them did for a living, but it couldn't have been better than running their family's company. Obito played himself off as a private investigator no, but Madara knew in reality he was a career criminal. The man made money doing things others didn't have the balls to do themselves. His experience as a police officer made him damn good at it too, as he knew exactly how to avoid getting caught. 
He had the three of them in front of his bed right now. All three of them had the same dark hair and eyes that Madara did and they'd all come in nice clothing so that they wouldn't insult their grandfather. The only real way you could tell them apart was by looking at their hair and faces. Itachi had a thin face with thin with long hair, Sasuke's was a little chubbier and he had shorter more unkempt hair, and Obito had mid-length hair and a face that was just a little bit chubbier than Sasuke's. Madara was pleased that they all came, hello you three, it's good to finally see you again. I do hope you all have an active interest in saving our company. Obito really didn't want to be here, so he asked rather crabbily, why in the hell did you make all of us take time out of our lives to talk about a company that's already dead? Madara scowled at his harsh words, I see you still have no respect for the company your ancestors built Obito. Do you even care about everything they sacrificed to build this great empire? To be fair grandfather, the company's days are number. It seems their sacrifices may have been in vain, Itachi reminded him. He was the older of the two brothers, and was the family's current voice of reason. Madara felt a little ridiculous after his grandson said that, you have a valid point there. However, I have found the solution. I've found something that will undoubtedly save this company and make sure that it's always provided for. Sasuke, the younger and more rash of the brothers, had a hard time believing that, I think the company is a little too far gone at this point. Let's face it grandpa, it's time to cut our losses and move on. Madara gave his great grandson the darkest glare he could manage, bite your tongue you brat. This company won't be dying now or anytime soon, because what I've got is foolproof. We're going to take over one of the greatest criminal organizations the world has ever seen. We're about to have complete control of the nine kings of crime, and once we have it, one of you can take over as CEO of the the company and we'll launder the money we make from the the nine kings into the United Sharingan defense. Obito nearly started laughing, you must be joking. Grandpa, we don't have even close to enough power to take those guys. What are you gonna do, use our old factories to supply an army? Madara couldn't believe how little faith his grandchildren had in him, not every plan requires guns or knives. I've already begun to set everything in motion. For the past week or so, with the help of a friend, I've been strategically ruining the king's operations. Now he had Itachi interests, I see. That does change things slightly, I'll admit. However, I'm already running a business coning old fools out of their cash. For Pete's sake, I make $80,000 a month, nearly a million dollars a year, and that's a minimum. Why should I risk that on a something that's not even a sure thing? Madara didn't follow his logic a million a year. That's nothing compared to what I'm offering. You've got a chance to be one of the richest men in the world once it's all said and done. You can't be telling me that you're gonna pass that up. Itachi scratched his chin, while that is a good point, I'm still just not sure. Sasuke was starting to look more nervous than the others, I think that Itachi's right. I'm making more than enough cash right now and I'm safe doing it. Why join the high mortality rate world of the Nine Kings if we don't have to? Madara felt Sasuke was sounding a little desperate, you're sounding a little bit nervous here. Surely you could always use more money Sasuke. What do you do for a living anyways? Officially I'm a private investigator, Sasuke said with a little sarcasm, but of course that's bullshit. Basically, I'm a very special kind of fixer for very wealthy criminals. People pay me a very high price because of how high risk the kind of things I fix are. The kind of stuff I do, you can't hand off to some kind of third-rate criminal. Madara was very glad to find that out, now this is a skill that will come in handy. I'm assuming of course that you are with my on this, right Sasuke? Sasuke didn't know what to say, but luckily Itachi saved him, I think I speak for all three of us when I say that we need time to think. This isn't something that we can decide on the fly grandfather. Madara opened his mouth to argue, but quickly shut it. Perhaps it was smarter to just let them do this willingly. It's not like all three of them would say no. Just to be safe, Madara told them, for the record, none of you will be at any real risk during this plan. I've seen to it that another person will be blamed for all of it. Obito felt like he should inquire further. What if the kings figure out who the guy is and interrogate him until he blabs on you? They'll come after you and fill your decrypted ass with bullets. Madara had planned way in advance for that problem, I've gained enough information to bury the nine kings. 
You have no idea what all I had to go through to get information. I had to sell and spend so much just to obtain some of it, but it was worth it in the end. If I die before this plan is complete, my assistant will open my personal safe and give this information to the police. I'd rather they die with me than live once I'm gone. Sasuke clenched his jaw a little bit, but didn't say what he was thinking, we'll take that into consideration. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got to go and meet up with an old friend. Madara looked a little disappointed, that's too bad. What about you guys, Obito and Itachi? Will you stay with this old man for a little while longer? Obito had no desire to spend any more time than he had to with the man, sorry, but I'm afraid I have business to attend to as well. Have a pleasant day though. Itachi felt a little guilty, so he said, I guess I could stay for half an hour, but I do have things I need to do today. Nice to see one of you still has time for me. You two are free to go I suppose, Madara said with slight irritation. Obito and Sasuke both wanted to come back with some kind of smart remark, but they really did have things they had to do. They gave Itachi a small nod and then left Madara's bedroom. Sasuke got out his phone the moment they were out of Madara's hearing range and turned to Obito, before I make this call, just let me say that there's no way in hell I'd ever work for that senile old bag of wind. Obito quickly agreed, same here. That guy's a real piece of work. I've never seen someone that greedy and egotistical. Sasuke dialed the phone and put it to his ear, tell me about it. Obito was too curious not to ask, who are you calling anyways? Sasuke could hear the other end ringing, for your own safety, don't ask. Obito could tell that whoever Sasuke was calling would likely make things more complicated, but he wasn't about to get all nosy with his cousin, well, if you say so. Just remember, you can always call me if you need help. Sasuke gave him a small nod before the person he was calling picked up, hello. Sasuke was glad he picked up so soon, hey Naruto, it's Sasuke. Something very big just came up. You and I need to meet up like right now. Naruto was more than a little surprised by all this, well, I guess that we up at my restaurant if you'd like. Sasuke wasn't crazy about the sound of that. I think it'd be better if we just met up at my house. Do you know where as is? Naruto knew how to get there. Well yeah, I sent you those checks last year. It would have been kind of hard to do that if I didn't have your address. Sasuke had almost forgotten, oh yeah. So you'll come then. Naruto really didn't have much of a choice, sure, I can be there in just about 20 minutes. Sasuke mulled that over in his mind, you might just beat me there then. Just tell Sakura you're there to see Sasuke and she'll let you in. It had been a while since Naruto heard that name, Sakura huh? How do you think she'll react to seeing me again? You know, I really don't think I could tell you, Sasuke said honestly, when's the last time you two saw each other? Naruto didn't even know, I can't remember, but I know that it's been a long time. At least six years, you'd better call Sakura and tell her I'm coming. Sasuke felt that was a pretty good idea, in that case I'll let you go so that I can call her. I'll see you in like half an hour. Naruto gave a short goodbye and hung up. Then Sasuke hit his speed dial and got to his next important call. He couldn't wait to see how all of this went. Back with Kakashi and Rin, things had finally begun to go right for them. Yagura had heard the description of the man who'd made the transactions and didn't even need to think about who it was. The only person he could think of that fit that description was Kabuto Yukushi, a medical student at the hospital Yagura went to a few months back for some x-rays. He'd never sold doents to Kabuto before, but that didn't really matter, no one else fit the description. Like Rin had noted earlier, this was a hard guy to forget. Once the detectives heard this, they went right into looking into who this Kabuto character really was. It didn't take much digging to see something wasn't right with him. Everyone they questioned him about at the hospital said the same thing. He practically worshipped a doctor by the name of Orochimaru. If you ever wanted to find Kabuto, just hang with Orochimaru and he'd show up eventually. Orochimaru didn't exactly seem normal either, several people saying the man scared the hell out of them. When they checked him out, things got even stranger. According to his credit card statement, he'd made all kinds of purchases for medical equipment that he kept at his home. What kind of doctor needed medical equipment at his house? Yet, while all of this was strange, 
there wasn't really a smoking gun anywhere to be found. It looked like Orochimaru may have ordered Kabuto to go to the bank for him, but there was no way to be sure yet. Kakashi and Rin both agreed that they shouldn't call Kabuto in yet, not until they asked Naruto what he wanted to do. They'd get their ducks in an order and then call Naruto once they were ready. Who knew, maybe there was a small chance, any chance, that Orochimaru would finally be the man they were looking for. Sasuke Uchiha lived in a small brown house surrounded by a white picket fence with flowers in the front and there was a nice park just a couple blocks away. It was like something out of a magazine, the perfect place to raise children. Sakura Haruno was hoping to have children in that house one day. She'd married Sasuke when she was just 19 years old, and for her life was like a fantasy. Sakura was a nurse at a local hospital and she was pretty good at her job. Most of her patients were a little thrown off by her hair though, as it was bright neon pink. Much like Fu, her has color was natural, but almost no one believed her. You wouldn't find many women in Konoha who were happier. She felt like she was living in some kind of fairy tale at times. It was the weekend, so she had the day off. That was very convenient, since Sasuke had a friend coming over today. Now she could make everyone some lunch. All she was wearing was a simple red t-shirt and some jeans, she was trying to remain comfortable. As she cut up some carrots and threw them into the salad she was making, Sakura heard someone knocking at the door. She of course rushed to go and get it, wanting to make sure that Sasuke's friend didn't want to wait. Sakura opened the door and found a blonde man waiting for her, Hi, you must be Naruto. It's very nice to meet you. Naruto jumped a little bit at her chipperness, um, yeah, I'm Naruto. Do you not remember me or something? Well you do look pretty familiar, Sakura admitted, but Sasuke said that you were a friend of his, so maybe the two of us met at a party. Naruto couldn't believe it, she really didn't remember him. It was all he could do to keep from laughing, yup, it was that party you guys had a while back. Sakura gave him a sweet smile and motioned for him to come in, well what are you waiting on? The two of us can wait for Sasuke together. Naruto followed her inside and mumbled, Sasuke is not gonna believe this. The moment Sasuke got home, Naruto pulled him into the hallway and told him about Sakura not remembering him. Sasuke's jaw nearly hit the floor, you're kidding me right? For God's sake, you chased after her all throughout high school and she actually slapped you when you asked her to prom. She doesn't even know who you are. Naruto scratched the back of his head. I guess the six years that she hasn't seen me in must have fogged her memory. She just thinks I am another one of your friends. Sasuke rubbed the bridge of his nose, wow, she really is a dumb bitch. Naruto just had to point out, you're the one who married her, I would have thought you'd know that already. Sasuke knew that was true, she was the perfect woman to make my wife. That pretty little idiot will believe anything I say as long as she gets to keep living her fantasy life. People are a lot less likely to suspect someone's a cold-blooded killer if he's a family man. Well then we better go eat that lunch she made and act like nothing's up. We can talk after we get some food, Naruto recommended. Sasuke knew that Naruto was right, so he followed his friend to get the food his wife had made. Like Naruto said, he needed to keep this ruse up if he wanted to keep doing what he was doing without getting caught. Given all of things Sasuke had, fixed, he really didn't feel like getting caught. The three of them had a pleasant meal along with plenty of nice conversation. Sakura had asked Naruto how he knew Sasuke, which Naruto just answered by saying he was a client of Sasuke's, not entirely a lie really. Naruto then asked Sakura how she and Sasuke had gotten together, causing her to spin a whimsical tale of her being swept off her feet by her amazing and caring husband once they got out of high school. Sasuke mostly sat there quietly wanting to laugh at how strange the whole interaction really was. Finally all of them finished their soup and salad and Sakura left to run a few errands. Before she left Sakura comment on how much she'd enjoyed Naruto's company and said that she hoped to see him again. Once she was out the door, the two friends began to laugh. Oh man, that was just hilarious. Naruto historically roared. Sasuke was having almost the exact same reaction. Four years of hating your guts are spitting on your feet and then she just forgets who you are. Oh man that's priceless. Once they had their laughter under control, Sasuke finally told Naruto why it had been so urgent that he saw him, 
before we start, I just have to ask. Dot you know that you can trust me, right? Naruto was taken back by the question, you were one of my only friends in high school and you've been my extreme issue fixer since I started the Nine Kings. You've been my best friend for the past 10 years. Of course I trust you. Once Sasuke heard that, he knew he could start. He needed to remember everything that his grandfather had told him because his friend's life depended on it. Naruto's eyes just got wider and wider as the story went on. It was like listening to some kind of horrible dream that Naruto couldn't wake up from. Sasuke could see just how worried Naruto was by looking at his face, and that's about it. Basically Madara's got you all by the short hairs right now. Naruto had a thousand thoughts running through his mind, is there any chance he's bluffing? I mean he could say he had the information so that you and your family would work with him, but he might really not have anything. Sasuke tapped his finger on the desk nervously. That's a possibility, but is it a risk you're willing to take? How much information do you think it would take to finish off you and your friends? Naruto gulped a little bit, not much. If Yamato smells blood in the water, he's going for the kill. Even the slightest bit of information on us might just get Yamato what he needs to tear our operation a new one. Sasuke really felt sorry for the guy, so what are you gonna do? You can't just kill Madara at least not until you find and destroy that information he had. This is really gonna take some time to figure out, Naruto said as his phone started to ring, oh man, this better be some good ing news. Naruto answered the call, but it didn't last very long. He listened carefully to what the person on the other end was saying and then responded, don't do a damn thing about it Kakashi. Get all of the kings at Choji's place right now and wait for me to, to get there. Just tell them that we've got a major break in the case and that it's very important that we all get together. I've got nothing else to say right now, so I'll call you later. Naruto hung up and Sasuke asked, so you're gonna warn all of them about Madara, good plan. What else? Naruto grabbed his coat, if no, I'm just gonna wing this whole thing for now until I can think of something better. Sasuke got up and put his hand on Naruto's shoulder, knowing you, you'll pull some crazy ass plan out of nowhere and fix all of this. Naruto just smirked at the compliment, Madara doesn't know what's coming for him. I'm pure raw chaos and I've got my sights set on him. All of the kings rushed over to Choji's restaurant when they got Naruto's call, extremely eager to see what he had to tell them. Each of them walked in to see Naruto was already there with Kakashi and a brown-haired woman. He looked like he was extremely deep in thought and kept muttering to himself about something. The only king he actually noticed walking in was Fu, and not just because she looked gorgeous as always. She was holding a cage that was covered by a thin blanket. Naruto's curiosity got the best of him, Fu, what's in the cage? Fu sat down in her seat and put the cage down too, just a little something I need to drop off once we're done here. The little guy is sleeping right now, so he won't make too much noise during the meeting. Naruto just figured it was business as usual and he looked around to see all of the kings were now there. He took a very deep breath and then said, All right people, I've got a lot to tell you, so listen closely. We've found out a lot of shit, and most of it is gonna surprise you. Yagura didn't care about any of that bullcrap, I don't care about what you've found out, I just want my damn money back. So were you able to figure out who took it or not? Naruto should have known that would be the first question, yeah Yagura, we've figured out who it was. The only problem is we can't can't touch a in hair on his head. Gara got very interested, very fast, who in the hell has so many connections that even we can't touch him. Naruto didn't think that anyone was gonna believe him when he said this, the ex-head of United Sharing and Defense, Madara Uchiha. He's the one who's been screwing around with our business. Yugito nearly felt like fainting, whoa, hold on a second. Why the hell would Madara Uchiha do something like this? He's rich as all hell, he always has been. I know that his company's dying, but he could just sell off all of his old equipment and factories. If he did that he could pay off all of his debts and still have a ton of cash left over. Kakashi had been around enough Uchiha's to answer that one, yeah, but then his company would just fade into the dust. He's not gonna let that happen. That's worse than death in Madara's mind. Han wasn't concerned with that right now, okay, so Madara is the one after us. 
Why can't we just put a bullet in the crazy mother's head and end it? Naruto just wished that someone would let him talk. If you'd all just listen to what I have to say, I'll tell you. Madara paid hand over fist to get whatever information he could on us, or at least that's what he told my informant. Yutakata quickly cut him off. Hold on a second, who's this informant that you're talking about and why should we trust him? Naruto shot Yutakata a very threatening glare. I can't tell you his name and you should trust him because I do. Apparently I need to make something very clear right now. None of you, and I mean none of, you are to do or say anything about any of this to anyone. Killer B trusted Naruto, but still had to ask, Yo, why are you being secretive about all of this bro? Naruto felt bad about telling them so little, because there's still a leak that we haven't plugged. We've got the jump on him right now, but if Madara finds out that we know, things will get a lot more complicated. Fu believed Naruto was telling the truth, come on guys, we know that we can trust Naruto. Roshi crossed his arms angrily, sorry if we're not as easily swayed as you are. We're not all in his brains out. Naruto looked far angrier than Fu did when he said that, do you have some kind of death wish Roshi? I'm just asking because claiming that I'm manipulating Fu sure makes it seem like you have a death wish. Fu tried to calm Naruto down, don't be like that babe, you know Roshi's just nervous about all of this, just like you are. Naruto heard Fu's voice and inside, if you say so sweetie, but he better watch his damn mouth. No one insults you like that. Rin finally spoke up. Ah, that's just plain romantic. Yagura was starting to feel even more pissed. Yeah, it romantic. Big freaking deal. Am I gonna get my money back or not? Han added in, and what about me? Am I gonna get a crack at this guy for messing with my operation? Naruto knew those were fair questions. I already promised you Yagura, I'll make sure you get your money back one way or another. As for you Han. I'll see what I can do, but I can't promise you anything. You've gotta remember you're not the only one he screwed with. Plus, we've got kill him in a way that it won't come back and bite us in the ass. Han and Yagura went silent when they heard that. Not like they could really ask for much more. Since Naruto could tell that they were both satisfied, he asked the others, so do any of you have a question? All of them looked around expecting someone to say something, but none of them did. Apparently all of them got what Naruto was saying, good, then all of you go home. I don't want you to say a word to anyone outside this room about anything we just said. Seriously, no one at all. We can't risk Madara finding out. They still hated the idea that someone who worked for them could be the issue, but the kings gave a slight nod just the same. Now that they knew Madara had this information on them, things were a lot more complicated. As always, Naruto's word was law. Since that was sorted out and they all had places to be, each of the kings expect for Naruto and Fu got up to leave. Naruto could hear that something was rattling in the cage Fu had brought, I think whatever's in that thing just woke up. Fu peeked under the cage, oh yeah, he's up alright. Perfect timing too. Naruto could hear that she'd opened the cage and he saw an orangish red bundle was being pulled out by Fu, what have you got there? Fu pulled it all the way out to reveal a small fox. Not quite a kid but not really an adult either, I got you a present. Isn't he just the cutest thing? Naruto couldn't believe it, so I guessing I'm the guy you had to drop him off to. I thought you said foxes were way too hard to train. Fu could still remember him asking if she could use her connections to get him a fox a year ago. He'd wanted one because of how much he liked the Kyubi, I said they're extremely difficult to train, which they are. However, for you, I found a guy who was willing to do it. It was a little expensive, but I was glad to cough up the money to make my boyfriend happy. You know, that's the first time you've called me your boyfriend, Naruto told her as he carefully brought his hand down to pet the fox. It was a little nervous, but the fox soon gave in to Naruto's gentle strokes. Fu got a surprised look on her face, damn, I guess it is. Ah, whatever, we know what we mean to each other. So do you like the fox? Naruto was smiling down at his new pet, oh yeah, I love him. Does he have a name yet? Fu pulled out some papers, his name is Kurama. You have to name them if you're gonna train them properly. These are all the licenses and whatnot that you need to have to own him legally. Naruto liked the name, Kurama huh? It's a good name, seems to fit him. 
When Naruto said Kurama, the fox looked up, wow, you're pretty smart. You know your name and everything. Fu was really pleased to see how happy she'd made Naruto, do you have a vet that knows how to handle fox stuff? Naruto picked up Kurama and held him to his chest, being careful not to hurt the little guy, my buddy Kiba and his family should be able to take good care of him if need be. Kakashi and Rin had been watching this whole thing and Kakashi needed to ask, hey Fu, can you settle a bet for me? Fu looked at the detective and just kind of shrugged, sure, if I can anyways. Kakashi had been wanting to ask this for years, I've got a buddy who swears up and down that if you pet foxes, they'll pure. That's bullshit right? Fu looked a little irritated, ugh, how many times do I have to tell people? Foxes don't pure, that's something felines do and foxes are much more closely related to canines. Anytime someone says a fox or anything related to a fox is purring, they're wrong. Kakashi could breathe easy now, thank you. Now I can tell guy that for, s sake. That's great Kakashi, Naruto said while still holding his new little buddy, but I think me and Fu should probably get going. I've got get Kurama adjusted to his new home and I wanted her to come with me. Fu agreed while scratched Kurama behind the ears, Naruto's right. I've gotta take all the stuff he needs for Kurama and teach him everything he needs to know about raising a fox. Rin was a little confused, isn't it just like raising a dog? Fu was thinking back on everything she'd learned about foxes, sort of, but there's some key differences. The main one is how their house broken. Kurama's already trained, but there's something special Naruto has to know that Kurama's been to taught to do when he has to use the bathroom. Don't want him peeing all over Naruto's apartment. Naruto couldn't have agreed more, that would pretty much. You'd better teach me that like the second we get home. Fu giggled and kissed Naruto on the cheek and then Kurama on the nose, don't worry, I will. Do you want Kurama to ride in your car or in mine? Naruto quickly said, mine of course. Kurama already knows you, but he still needs to learn who I am. Fu couldn't argue with that, alright, I'll see you at your place then. Fu started to leave and Naruto turned to Kakashi and Rin, yup, we'll see at home. So what are you guys gonna do? Rin had a feeling it best to tell him, we're heading to see Jiraiya to tell him what everything we've found out. It's okay if we tell him, right? Yeah, just make sure he knows not to tell anyone else. His opinion is pretty valuable anyways, Naruto said as he left. Kakashi and Rin watched Naruto leave with lover and new pet with a quizzical look on their faces, only Naruto would go through all that just to get a fox for a pet. Kakashi was kind of used to it, hey, as long as it's not anything that can kill him, I'm fine with it. Rin figured Kakashi was right, fair enough. We should probably go track down Jiraiya and tell him what we've found. I'll be willing to bet he'd like to know. Kakashi was thinking that same thing, sounds good to me. Do you wanna drive or should I? Rin took the keys out of Kakashi's pocket, I'll do it. That way you can focus on something for the two of us to talk about. Kakashi started to smile under his mask. Rin was coming around, and he couldn't have been happier to see it. Once the meeting was over, Gara went right to manage his fake business that he used to launder his hitman money. He pretended to sell real estate, beachfront property to be exact, as it was a very easy business to launder money in. There was a few things he'd been hoping to do with his false business before he started looking at what people he had on hit list this week. He was in for a bit of a surprise when he walked into the office, as Hinata Hayuga was already there and was handling some of his affairs. Gara got nervous when he saw her, but just stuck to his normal monotone, Ms. Hayuga, how nice to see you. I didn't think that you were scheduled to work with us today. Hanada was sorting through some papers, I wasn't actually, Tamari called and said that you guys were super busy so she asked me to come over and help. It took some moving around of my other appointments, but I was able to swing it. Gara suddenly felt kind of guilty, oh, she didn't need to do that. I'm sure we could have managed without you. Tamari walked in right then, now Gara, don't go and act like we aren't swamped. We've got plenty of extra work that needs to be done and I'm very grateful that Hinata has agreed to help us. Hinata gave the blonde woman a little smile, I was happy to come and help out Tamari. It's not like you guy don't pay me very well. Gara thought about protesting more, but Tamari walked over and pulled him to the side, 
whispering, why would you go and say something like that? I know you want her here even more than I do. Gara both loved and hated how much Tamari liked to get involved in his life. She'd made him do things that got him out of his comfort zone, but those things he often ended up enjoying. However, this was making him very nervous, why did you invite her here in the first place? We don't have that much extra work that needs to be done. Tamari rolled her eyes, for God's sake Gara, you're crazy about that girl. You make Gaga eyes at her every time she comes in here. Gara fired right back, and she's crazy about Naruto. I don't have a chance with her. Tamari countered with, Naruto is taken already and she knows it. Just ask her out, what's the worst that could happen? Gara could think of a lot of very bad things that could happen, but none of them were all that likely, I don't know about this Tamari. She pointed at Hinata and whispered sternly, damn it Gara, to talk to her already. Gara could see his sister was serious, so he timidly walked over to her, so Hinata, is it okay if I call you that? Hanada gave him a funny look and then giggled, of course it is Gara. We're friends right? Gara got his hopes up a little when he heard that, yes, we've become very close, haven't we? Hanada gave him one of those smiles that made him like her so much, I know you're not exactly great with people, but once you let someone in, they see what a nice guy you are. Gara finally let loose a smile of his own, thank you, that's very sweet of you to say. Hanada was known for being nice. I'm just telling the truth Gara. I actually look forward to seeing you every day. Gara just kept feeling better and better, I feel the same way, so how long are you here for? Hanada looked at her watch, just five or ten more minutes. I was barely able to get time to come here at all. Gara could see he didn't have much time, so he started to ask, so Hanada, I was wondering if, maybe you'd consider, maybe if you had the time, that you and I could, well I was thinking um. Tamari just couldn't watch her brother make a fool out of himself, what my brother is so eloquently trying to ask you, is if you'd like to go out on a date with him sometime. Gara was glad Tamari had come to save him, what she said. Hanada was clearly a bit taken back by the question, you want to take me out on a date? Why? Gara decided it would best to just be honest, you're amazing Hanada. You've got such a sweet face, that long blue hair, you're. Gara blushed a little, amazing body, and so many other things that make you beautiful. You're also one of the kindest women I've ever met and one of the smartest too. Hanada wasn't sure what to say. The things he was saying were so sweet and he really was a nice guy. She knew that she could never have Naruto, so why not give Gara a chance? I really don't see what it could hurt, so I guess I'll say yes. Whenever you've got the time, I'd be happy to go out on a date with you. Gara felt like his heart just did a backflip, thank Hanada, that means quite a lot to me. I'll have the details sorted out just as soon as I can. Gara walked out of the room with a bit of a grin on his face, causing Tamari to ask, what would you do without me? While Gara was chasing after his dream girl, Kakashi and Rin headed to Jiraiya's place to see if he was home. The old detective never got around to having a family, so he lived all by himself. Without a family to visit, he didn't really have much to do. Even though the man was a full-on pervert, he had tried more than once to settle down and have a family. It just hadn't ever worked out for him. Of course Minato had been like a son to him, but Minato wasn't here anymore. Since he didn't have any family, Jiraiya was almost always at home. This turned out to be the case when Kakashi and Rin came knocking at his door, much to their convenience. They'd only knocked twice before he opened the door, Rin, how nice of you to stop by. What are you doing in this neck of the woods? Kakashi had to grumble, I'm here too. Jiraiya gave him a quick response, I saw you, I just don't care to reply. Kakashi kept grumbling as Rin said, hey Jiraiya, we're actually here on Naruto's behalf. Mind if we come in? Jiraiya's doors were always open when it came to something about Naruto, come right in. Whatever Naruto needs, I'm happy to oblige. Kakashi didn't know how Jiraiya was gonna treat him, I don't suppose you've forgiven me for the whole Naruto thing yet. What do you think? Jiraiya asked in a fake cheerful tone. Kakashi slumped down, come on Jiraiya, I've admitted what I did was wrong. Even Rin's forgiven me at this point. Jiraiya gave Rin a slightly funny look, really, you actually forgave him. 
Rin just kind of shrugged, what can I say? You can't change the past and Kakashi's done everything he can to make up for what he did. I figured that I could at least give him a shot. Kakashi added on to what Rin said, that's all I'm asking for Jiraiya, just a shot. Can't you just give me that? Jiraiya had to think about this. He supposed if Rin could do it, then he could do it too, fine, but we'll just be acquaintances to start this off. You have to earn my friendship back. Kakashi was starting to feel the pressure, you guys never make it easy on me, but okay. Jiraiya figured they'd better get the pleasantries over with, so what's going on with Naruto? Last time I talked to him, he didn't have any leads decent leads. Rin looked less than happy, well now we've got plenty of leads, but there's nothing we can do about them. Jiraiya wondered how things could flip like that, okay, you guys better tell me the whole thing. Let's start with how you could have leads that you aren't allowed to chase. First, Kakashi told him about Madara and everything the old man was planning for the kings. Jiraiya wasn't all that surprised that Madara was the person behind all this. From what Jiraiya had heard, he was a man with a lot of pride and he very low moral standards. Then they filled him in about the information Madara said he had on all of the kings which also didn't surprise Jiraiya, as Madara was smart enough to have an insurance policy. Most of what they said really didn't throw Jiraiya for much of a loop, it was only when they started talking about Orochimaru that they really got his attention. Wait a second, what did you just the doctor's name was? Jiraiya asked urgently. Rin was used to Jiraiya being like this, his name was Orochimaru. What's the big deal? He's just some lowlife doctor, right? Jiraiya leaned back in his chair with a worried look on his face, if only that were true. Was he a creepy looking guy that almost looked like a human snake? Kakashi didn't like how close he was, that almost sounds like a direct quote from the people we talked to. Do you know this guy or something? Jiraiya rubbed his eyes in a tired manner, I wish I could say no, but I know that crazy son of a bitch all too well. He was one of the coroners back when I was police captain. This was the first time Rin had heard anything about this, I thought Tsunade was coroner back then. Jiraiya loved having a reason to talk about her again, ah Tsunade, you sexy ing fox. Tall, blonde, an ass that'll make you cry, a beautiful pair of natural that I think God himself created. She was smart and strong too, you didn't wanna with her. Kakashi was starting to feel uncomfortable. Can we just get back to Orochimaru please? Jiraiya could see he'd went a tad too far, he he, sure. The man was clearly a genius, and I mean an actual legit genius. He has a near photographic memory and an IQ of like 150. Eventually, I started to suspect that he was fudging autopsy reports for cash. I started to look into it, but Orochimaru quickly figured out what I was trying to do and left to go work at a hospital. Never was able to figure out what he was spending that extra cash on. Rin went a little bit pale, me and Kakashi have some theories, but something tells me you don't want to know. Jiraiya sighed heavily at having to take this walk down memory lane, I think you're right. If Madara and Orochimaru are working together, I really don't want to think about what they could do to Naruto and the kings. We need to put a stop to these guys fast. That why we came to see you, Kakashi told him, do you have any ideas as to what our next move should be? For one of the first times in his life, Jiraiya didn't have a clue, shit, I don't even know where to start. The only thing we've got going for us is that we've already got a man on the inside. Dot but then again, so does Madara. Rin nearly forgot about the traitor, he does make things more complicated, we're going to have a hard time getting anything done if we have to keep tiptoeing around our own people, what should we do? Jiraiya was thinking hard, I think that we can work around the spy, if we just keep being careful about only letting the kings know what's going on. Hopefully this is the last time I have to ask this, what do you want us to do Jiraiya? Kakashi asked once again. Jiraiya wasn't sure if he had the perfect idea, but he had something that he thought might work, Madara has to be keep all of the information he gathered somewhere. If we can just get Sasuke to earn his trust, Madara might just let it slip where he's got the info hidden. Rin was wondering if they should have that much faith in Sasuke, Sasuke's never been one to hide his emotions. Are you sure he can pull it off? Jiraiya had only met Sasuke a couple of times, but he still trusted the man. Sasuke cares enough about Naruto that I think he'd do almost anything for him. For Naruto, 
I know he'll keep himself under control. That was good enough for Kakashi. Sasuke is supposed to have another meeting with his grandfather tomorrow. I'll call him right now and tell him what to do, then I'll call Naruto and give him the rundown. Jiraiya hoped to God he was right, he didn't want to think about losing Naruto like he'd lost Minato. A lot of this plan was going to be riding on Sasuke, so all Jiraiya could do was sit back and watch for now. Talk about frustrating. Sasuke was very nervous right now, he hadn't heard back from Naruto for a couple of hours, so he had no idea how the meeting went. Naruto was probably the closest friend Sasuke had and he was possibly in danger right now. How much more nervous could a guy get? Now he was practically sitting right on top of his phone, just begging it to ring while he sat on his comfy couch. Finally the damn thing went off and Sasuke answered it right away, about ing time you called me. What's the word Naruto? There was a small laugh on the other end, actually, it Kakashi, but I'll still be happy to fill you in on everything. Sasuke didn't care who it was at this point, yeah, nice to talk to you, blah blah, what's going on with Naruto? Kakashi kind of wanted to keep screwing the man, Jesse Sasuke, you're sounding all stressed out. Maybe you should go take a nice bath, light a few candles, relax a little bit. Sasuke growled on the other end, tell me what I want to know or I swear I'll reach through this phone and rip out your brain so that I can just find the answer myself. Kakashi really was having fun with this, well that's kind of physically impossible, but okay, here's what you missed while we were at the meeting. Sasuke finally got the straight answer and you could see him getting nervous as they got to the part about him tricking Madara, you want me to betray my grandfather? Kakashi figured this would be a bit of a sore spot with him, you either have to betray him, or let Naruto be fed to the dogs. It's up to you, but I think I know what you're going to choose. Sasuke felt a little bad that it took him almost no time to answer, there's way I can turn my back on Naruto like that, even if Madara is my grandpa. He's insane and he's crossing a line this time. Hell, I don't want to try and manage the Nine Kings. Naruto's literally got the perfect setup. Everyone's got their role and I'd have to find people to fill of those roles. I don't need that much cash and I don't need that much stress. Kakashi could totally understand that, heavy lies the head that wears the crown. That's why Naruto made sure he didn't have too much pressure on him. He would have gone nuts ages ago if he'd tried to do all this by himself. Well that's all I needed to tell you. Make sure you're ready for your meeting with your grandfather tomorrow. You've got to earn his trust as quickly as possible. Sasuke saw his wife coming so he quickly said, Yeah, I'll make sure that it gets done. I'll call once I've got everything in motion. Have yourself a nice evening now. He hung up the phone and Sakura sat down next to him, Who was that honey? Sasuke played it off like it was nothing, Oh, just a client who wanted me to do a couple of things for him tomorrow, nothing major. Sakura was clearly very excited about something, I've got some really big news Sasuke, you're not gonna believe it. Sasuke wasn't sure what to expect, sounds like it's something good, what is it? Sakura put her hands on her stomach, I'm pregnant. Sasuke was shocked for a moment, but was genuinely happy in mere moments, that's wonderful, is it for sure? Sakura nodded and said gleefully, of course, I didn't want to tell you until I was sure. Sasuke really was very happy about all of this. He'd always wanted a child, and he really did have feelings for Sakura. While Sasuke wasn't sure if it was love, there was definitely something good there, so when did you find about this? Sakura was still giggling, I was two weeks late for my period today, so I bought some tests at the store. As soon as I got home, I tested myself three times, they all came out positive. Sasuke's mind was racing, I'm gonna be a daddy, you're gonna be a mommy we're gonna be parents. Sakura threw her arms around Sasuke, this is gonna be so perfect, we're gonna have a family. Oh Sasuke, I'm just so happy. Sasuke could more than understand that, it's really amazing, how far along are you? Sakura had already figured that out, I'm a month along. In just eight months we're gonna have a little baby here, I've got a person growing inside of me. Sasuke put his hand on her stomach, are you hoping for a boy or a girl? I don't care, as long they've got your eyes, Sakura answered while looking deeply into Sasuke's eyes. Sasuke looked back, excitement still dancing in his eyes, yeah, my eyes, oh crap, I almost forgot. Sakura looked at him curiously, what is it? Sasuke had to think up an excuse for the whole Madara thing, my grandpa is gonna need my help for the next couple of weeks. 
he's got some more medical stuff he needs my help with. Sakura couldn't see any reason to question that, oh, well that's no big deal. It's not like I'm gonna have the baby anytime soon. A couple of weeks won't matter. I know, Sasuke replied, it's just gonna be a bit of a pain. Sakura thought of something, he's pretty old, do they think that this might be it for him? Sasuke wanted to say he hoped so, but instead he said, it's a distinct possibility, and he's more than pretty old. The man is older than dirt for crying out loud. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know him that much. It's not gonna be a big deal for me. Sakura hadn't ever even met the man, I guess you've got a point there. Oh well, it doesn't matter right now. What matters is that we're going to have our own little bundle of joy soon. Sasuke agreed and let her cuddle up with him. This wasn't the perfect time to have a baby, but he really couldn't complain. He was getting what he always wanted, a little baby to call his own. Part of him wanted a little son that could pass on the family name and bond with, and part of him wanted a little girl that he could treat like a princess and scare guys away from. Maybe if he was lucky he could have both one day. Naruto and Fu got back to his apartment relatively fast, although only because Naruto didn't want Kurama to pee in the car. The fox had his little paws on the dashboard and he was trying to see out the window the whole time. It was quite cute to look at. Fu had really hit the nail on the head with this gift. Once they got to the apartment, Naruto set Kurama down and the bundle of red fur immediately left to go and explore his new home. Naruto watched as Kurama curious eyes looked over the small place with curious eyes. He left no corner of the apartment unturned, making sure to take everything in. Finally the fox stopped moving and seemed to nod as if he approved of the place. Then he went into the living room and walked in little circles, then lied down. Naruto was pretty impressed at the animal's intelligence, wow, he's a smart little bugger, isn't he? Fu already knew that, that's why he was picked by the trainer. Kind of like humans with their kids, foxes can get one kid that's randomly smarter than the rest of them. He was born a lot smarter than the average fox, which made him perfect for training. Naruto asked a question he had been thinking about earlier, does he come if you call his name or anything like that? Fu remembered that was one of the things she needed to teach Naruto, oh yeah, he only didn't come before because you were already holding him and I was petting him. Say his name, go ahead. Naruto looked at his fuzzy buddy and said his name, come here Kurama. The fox looked up and yipped, then walked over to Naruto. Fu knew he'd come, you see, I told that he'd do it. Naruto wasn't surprised, I trusted you. Kurama is gonna be a ton of fun. Fu bent down and picked him up. Yeah, but there's a couple things that you've gotta know about him. Nothing scary, just little things about what he does and what he needs to do and stuff. Naruto really wanted to make sure Kurama was properly raised, so he made sure not to miss a word Fu said. Like Fu said, there wasn't anything that Naruto couldn't handle. Kurama had little things he would do when he needed to use the bathroom and there were specific things that he should be eating. Basically, a fox was alike this one was a very high maintenance dog. It took a little longer for foxes to become affectionate, but Naruto had a feeling he could get Kurama's trust pretty easily. It didn't take long before Naruto felt he the hang of it. He'd written most of what Fu said down though, just to be safe. He brought his hand up to scratch Kurama's neck, huh, that's not so bad. So what do you think Kurama? Do you wanna be a new part of my little family? Kurama gave a small yip and started to like Naruto's fingers. Fu thought that was a pretty clear answer, I think that's a yes, so, am I part of your little family? Naruto got a small blush on his face, do you really have to ask? Fu cuddled up with Kurama, nope, I know right where I fit in. I'm gonna be over a lot more now so that Kurama can cuddle with mama. Naruto got what Fu was saying, so if you're Kurama's new mama huh? Fu gave him a coy wink, yup, you got a problem with that daddy. Naruto leaned in and gave her a little kiss, nope, I think we're the perfect little ed up family. Kurama started to squirm a little bit and Fu said, I'm gonna take him outside so that he relieve himself. You should probably call your vet to make sure that he's got all the stuff he's gonna need to take care of a fox. Naruto figured that Kiba would be able to handle anything Kurama needed, but he would call his old friend anyways, alright, do you have a leash for him or something like that? 
Fu held up a blue collar with a leash attached to it. Of course, I'm gonna put him on this before I go. Don't want him wandering off. He's smart, but he's still a wild animal. Naruto was glad to hear it had he started to dial his phone. It was ringing for a while before Kiba picked up on the other end. Damn it Naruto, this better be good. Ino's wearing nothing but whipped cream right now. Naruto was taken a little off guard, whipped cream huh? That's actually kind of tame for you guys. Kiba couldn't deny that, we only get really kinky if we have days where we know we're not gonna do anything. For stuff like that, you've gotta be able to focus. Naruto didn't even wanna know, right? So I just wanted to call you and tell you that I got a new pet. A little fox named Kurama. Even with a naked girl in his bedroom, well sort of naked, he was kind of intrigued by this, a fox huh? Well that's pretty cool, but why are you calling me about it? Naruto was surprised he had to explain, because I was hoping that you could be his personal vet. Kiba felt kind of stupid all of a sudden, oh, right. Guess I'm just not used to you calling me for something other than killing people. I'm not actually a full-fledged vet yet, but I can handle a fox just fine until I am. They're exotic pets, but not really all that much more complicated than a dog. Naruto knew that he'd say yes, well thanks. I'll make sure to pay you extra for this, so don't worry about that. Ino was heard from a slight distance, oh Kiba, you better not be getting soft on me. Kiba groaned a little bit and said, that's great Naruto, but I've gotta go. A sexy girl covered in ice cream topping is waiting for me. Naruto was about to comment, but Kiba hung up the phone, I swear, those two like a couple of rabbits. A couple of very messed up, kinky little rabbits. Then Naruto saw a little orange blur jump up on the counter, letting him know that Fu was back in the apartment. Before he could even say anything, Fu wrapped her arms around him and slowly slid her hand down to his groin, ah, don't be so hard on them. How about I remind you just how much fun we had the other night? Naruto shuddered with pleasure, oh, you are one sneaky woman. Dot and God bless you for it. She started to unzip his pants pulled out his large member, ah yeah, now that's what I'm talking about. Let's put his bad boy to some good use. Naruto was enjoying Fu's soft, warm, skilled hand stroking his, so much so that he really didn't want it to end. However, he was the kind of guy to let a girl pleasure him without returning the favor. He spun Fu around and gave her a soul-searing kiss and he brought his hand up under her skirt. Sliding his hand under her white silk panties, Naruto began to gently rub her lower lips. Fu loved it when he tried to take control, oh, good start. Naruto started to move his middle finger in and out of her and whispered into her ear, for the rest of night, I'm gonna make you feel like you're the only girl in the world. By the time I'm done with you, you won't even be able to walk. Fu knew that he was serious and told him just as seriously, I'm gonna you dry and leaving you begging for more. Mai is gonna make you come like a freight train. Naruto should have known better than to try and out dirty talk Fu. He started to kiss and on her neck, using actions instead of words to beat her. Fu's mind started to go hazy and Naruto could hear her breathing speeding up, oh good god yes. Naruto gave Fu a victorious smirk, that's right, I know just how you like it, don't I? Shut up you idiot, Fu panted as pulled Naruto in for another long kiss. Fu and Naruto started to make their way to the bedroom, their lips still locked tightly. As they were falling onto the bed, Kurama was following them unnoticed. The clever little fox jumped up on a chair that was in the room and watched his new, parents, as they began their lovemaking session. The lovers didn't sense the fox even a little bit, they were far too wrapped up in passion of the moment. Naruto and Fu were going at it hotter than they ever had before. It had actually gotten too intense for Kurama to keep watching, so he'd left the room and was taking a nap on the couch. Naruto's pants were completely off along with his shirt. Fu was down to only her panties, her perky sea cup were bouncing up and down right in front of Naruto's face. He'd always loved her s. They were same tan color the rest of her skin was, perfectly round, with dark pink nipples that were currently erect. Fu was currently lying on her back, moaning as her boyfriend stimulated the most sensitive parts of her body. Naruto was ing and swirling his slick tongue around one nipple while he gently pinched the other between his fingers and massaged her with his hand. She loved how hot Naruto was a tit man, oh yeah, 
You love these tits, don't you? Naruto pulled his head up. You know it, and you love it when I on them too. Fu arched her back up in pleasure and said, This is great and all, but these'll feel even better if they're being used on you. Naruto knew what that meant, so he got up and laid down on his back like Fu had. Well then please, go ahead and use them. Fu got off of her back and leaned to down by his rigid, I'm gonna take you to Haven babe. She grabbed her and engrossed his member in between them. Naruto threw his head back and groaned as soon as he felt how soft yet firm they were. Ah shit Fu, you're the best. Fu started moving s up and down the, giving Naruto one of her tit jobs that he loved so much. Don't too fast now, I want you to enjoy this. Naruto was a little offended by that statement, although you couldn't really tell with the look of pure bliss on his face, you're good Fu, but I don't that easily. Fu gave him a seductive smirk and started to pick up the pace a little bit. Once she got the chance, she gave his shaft a nice long lick. The warm saliva let Naruto's move through her s much easier, making it feel even better for Naruto, oh yeah, well how about now? Naruto's hips bucked a little bit, oh good god yes. I think I'm gonna soon. Fu kept moving faster and faster, she could feel Naruto's twitching in between her s, that right Naruto, do it. All over me face and my. Don't hold back. Naruto was reaching his limit hearing her talk like that, Fu. I'm gonna blow. Fu could feel his twitching even more before he lost all control and came all over her body. She smiled as she sat up. Naruto's running down her s and cheeks. Taking her fingers, Fu wiped some of it off her cheeks and licked it off her hand. Oh my Naruto, this is a pretty big load. You must have been really eager. I don't mind though, because you taste so good. Naruto looked down to see he was still hard as a rock, I'm not even close to done yet. I think it's time we get to the main event. Fu got down on her hands and knees, pointing her perfect heart-shaped ass right in Naruto's face. She shook it a little bit, just to get her boyfriend's blood going a little harder, well then show me what you've got. I made you come, now it's your turn to return the favor. Naruto crawled over to her in anticipation and pulled her panties off. Then he rubbed his member on her lower lips, oh, you're looking pretty wet here. You want this pretty bad, don't you? Fu started to breath harder as Naruto teased her, oh come on, don't be like this. Just stick it in already. Me, hammer my. Naruto couldn't resist those words, Fu, you always know just what to say. He grabbed her hips and rammed into her. She threw her head back and screamed as he totally filled her. Naruto kept pulling in and out of her, the sound of their bodies smacking together filled the room. Fu clutched the sheets as her mind became more and more of a blur, oh yes. Oh yeah, right in there. Faster Naruto, faster. Naruto didn't need to be told twice, so he started moving his hips even faster. Oh yeah, your feels so good. Fu's whole body was going numb. Naruto just kept pounding into her harder and harder. He was like some kind of animal that just couldn't stop. No one could please her like Naruto could, no one on earth. When the two of them came together, it was the best sex either of them had ever had. Naruto could feel her getting tighter, signaling that she was close to coming. Since he'd come one already, Naruto wasn't quite there yet. That was good, since it gave them a chance that to come together late on. Naruto, I'm close say to M Ming. Fu panted out, trying to catch her breath so that she would talk to her lover. Naruto could feel her juices starting to coat his, I know, I can feel it. It's okay, go ahead and. Fu let out one last scream as she released everything onto her boyfriend's member, oh god yes. Naruto pulled out of her, panting quite a bit himself, I'm gonna guess you enjoyed yourself there, huh? Fu had a bit of a goofy smile on her face, I'm in too good of a mood to even make a smart ass remark about that, she said before she looked at herself in Naruto's bedroom mirror, I'm pretty dirty though. Maybe we should go and grab a shower. That was just what Naruto was hoping she'd say. They had some of their best sex in the shower. He got up and motioned to the bathroom, a shower sounds nice. After you Fu. Fu got up and walked into the bathroom, you know it's kind of funny, most people take a shower to get clean. You and me though, we're usually getting pretty dirty in there. Naruto gave a playful smack on her ass, that's the best way to do it if you ask me. Fu giggled as she got into the shower and turned on the hot water, I think so too. 
Come on in sweetie, the water feels great. Naruto stepped into his tile shower and closed the door. Their lips soon met as they got into another intense kissing war. They both made sounds of pleasure as their tongues dance around one another's and they explored each other's body. Naruto's erection was still going strong, much to Fu's joy, that thing just never quits, does it? Not when you're around, he said before he started kissing her again. Fu spread her legs and got ready, I think we're past foreplay at this point. Just me again, even harder than before. Naruto started to enter her again, okay, but remember that you asked for this. Oh yeah, I asked for it, so you'd better not hold back. Fu warned him. Naruto was once again fully inside her, believe me, that won't be an issue. Before long he was moving in and out of her and she started to move in rhythm with him. The two of them once again began to whisper sweet nothings into each other's ears. Although their sweet nothings were dirty enough to make a sailor blush. The warm water flowing all over their bodies made the whole thing more pleasurable for both Naruto and Fu, not that either of them ever knew why. Something about the shower just made things so much better. It was their favorite place to have sex. Naruto's eyes rolled into the back of his head as Fu kept grinding her hips into him, leaning back into the wall so that she could keep her balance. He could barely keep his mind sharp enough to trail kisses all over Fu's body. To him, looking at his girlfriend's naked body was like looking at that of a goddess. Fu was loving the relentless way Naruto was in her. She ran her fingers through his hair, trying her best not to pull it right out of his head. As far as she was concerned, her boyfriend had pretty much a perfect body. The two of them could tell the other was close to coming. Naruto because Fu's was getting tighter and Fu because Naruto's was twitching more and more. Naruto panted out a little bit, I'm almost th here. Fu ran her nails across his back, do it Naruto, right inside me. Come on, ing do it. Naruto and Fu weren't able to hold back anymore. They both screamed as they came simultaneously. The blonde completely unloaded into his girlfriend while Fu came on his. Their juices mixed together and spilled out onto the shower floor poured down into the drain. Naruto soon caught his breath, well, that was fun. Fu couldn't recover quite as fast as Naruto could, so she was still panting a little, way more than fun. That might just be the best sex we've ever had. Naruto rolled his eyes, you say that every time we have sex. Fu fired back, well maybe it just gets better every time. Naruto had a hard time arguing with that with you, that's a definite possibility. Guess as long as we're in here, we might as well actually take a shower. Fu grabbed some soap and started to rub it on her body, sure, as long as we're in here. The two of them got showered up, only this time they just took a legitimate shower. They got all cleaned up and then dried off, then went back into the bedroom to put some of their clothes back on. When they got done getting dressed, Kurama was in the middle of the bed taking a nap. Fu found it pretty funny, looks like he's making himself right at home. Naruto smiled and shook his head, he seems pretty comfy right there. Looks like we've got a new sleeping buddy. Fu laid down next to Kurama, eh, I don't mind. You up for a nap? Naruto laid down and put his around Fu, after that workout, a nap doesn't sound half bad. The two of them drifted off to sleep with Kurama in between them. It was a nice little moment for the three of them. They were almost like one little happy family. Sasuke had spent most of his night celebrating after Sakura had given him the good news. Neither of them drank alcohol of course, didn't want to take any risks with Sakura pregnant and all. However, he had to go and see his grandfather the very next morning. He needed to start earning Madara's trust, which was going to take a while. That meant he was gonna have to start as soon as possible so that he could get this done before Naruto and his buddies ended up in a bad position. He was at his grandfather's mansion right now and was the only young Uchiha there today, both Obito and Itachi had other things to do, so he was going to be all alone with his grandpa. Hopefully that would make things easier on him since Madara would have less distractions. He walked through the empty halls until he found Madara's bedroom. Sasuke peeked inside and saw his grandfather was already awake. Madara seemed glad to see him. Sasuke, I really wasn't expecting you so soon. Have you made your decision already? Sasuke knew that he'd want to get right down to business. Actually, yes I have. 
You were right about never having too much cash. The more I thought about it, the more that extra cash sounded pretty good to me. Madara felt that was a pretty big change in attitude after just one day. I thought you said you were totally comfortable with the amount of money you had. Sasuke needed to think of a quick explanation, one that Madara would be able to buy. He was thinking so hard, trying so hard, to come up with something his grandfather would believe. It quickly hit him that he had the perfect reason to need more money, one that Madara would even be happy about. Well um, hee hee, I just found out last night that Sakura is pregnant and I've heard that babies can cost a lot of money, Sasuke told him with a nervous smile. Sasuke had found the perfect excuse indeed. Madara was ecstatic to hear about a new Uchiha, well now this is most wonderful news. You see Sasuke, this is just what you needed. To be shown the value of family. You'll be restoring this family's honor and carrying on its name at the same time. My boy, I'm so proud of you. Sasuke hadn't ever seen Madara this happy before. Damn, this family really is important to you, isn't it? There's nothing more important to me than this family's legacy, Madara told him confidently, and with your help I can properly protect it. It looked like there were two reasons it was good that Sakura was pregnant, well, I want to see to it that my wife and child are well cared for. I know that I make a lot of money now, but my future son or daughter is only gonna get the best. What I make now might not be enough to cover that. Madara felt the man was finally saying things that made sense, now you're thinking straight. Uchiha's never settle for something that's second rate, cash is not an issue for people like us. We let the weak deal with things like that. Sasuke could hardly believe how his grandfather viewed the world around him, but he didn't want to say how he really felt. He just agreed, that would the right of the Uchiha's, yes. Madara looked at Sasuke with pride, I knew that you'd see it my way. It was just a matter of time and the proper motivation. Sasuke decided to move into the next topic but delicately enough so that Madara wouldn't get suspicious, but if I'm gonna do this shit, I need to be filled in on a couple of things. I can't go into this completely blind after all. Madara understood that, well that's fair enough, no one with a brain would do this without the facts. What specifically did you want to know? Sasuke had to think very carefully here. If asked for too much, Madara would start to suspect something. Yet, if he asked a little, Naruto would have nothing to work with. He had to pick a good opening question here. After a little bit of thinking, Sasuke felt he had a question that would work pretty well, let's start with an easy one. Which one of the kings do you plan to hit next? Madara thought about it for a couple of seconds, then decided it was safe to tell him, that buffoon who calls himself Killer B, I've got something very special planned for him. I barely know him, and yet I already hate him. He raps of all things. Raps. Back when in my day, rap was just called noise. Sasuke felt it was a little too soon to ask exactly what Madara was going to do to be, so he just said, I never was much for rap. It's not bad I guess, I just prefer some nice rock and roll. Madara didn't care for that either, classical is the only thing worth listening to if you ask me. Sasuke decided not to get into an argument with him, we could split hairs about this all day. How about instead, you just tell me what all you need me to do for the Nine Kings situation. Madara got excited again, yes, now that is an excellent suggestion. There's a couple of things that I would vastly appreciate you doing for me. Sasuke just kind of shrugged, wanting Madara to get to the point, okay, what did you have in mind? Madara started to name off some simple tasks that he wanted Sasuke to do. Nothing really hard, but also not something you could hand off to just anybody. Most of it was simple stuff, seeing that Orochimaru got a couple of papers, messing with some United Sharingan defense papers, things like that. However, there was one thing Madara asked that was actually worth Sasuke's talents. So you want me to be a guard for Orochimaru? What exactly does he need guarding from? Sasuke asked, not understanding his grandfather's request. Madara didn't have any problem telling him about this part, apparently. He unknowing screwed over a crime ward by the name of Gato in a small city just outside of Konoha. Back when he was a coroner, he faked some details in an autopsy report that almost put Gato in jail. Orochimaru later found out he'd been paid off by a rival crime lord. 
Gato doesn't leave his own territory because he doesn't want to piss off the other crime lords, but Orochimaru needs to get some drugs that are only available in Gato's hometown. You just need to keep him from getting his head blown off tomorrow. Sasuke could handle that like it was nothing, that's it. I almost thought you had something hard for me. Madara loved his attitude, glad you feel that way. That's all for now, you could leave if you'd like, but I'd love it if you'd stay and have a meal with me like your brother did. Sasuke kind of wanted to say no, but he was trying to earn Madara's trust. He'd just have to eat a meal with the old man, sure, what are you in the mood for? Another important meeting was going on as well, but this one was of a romantic nature. Gara and Hinata had decided to go out for lunch, as that was the only time that both of them were free. They didn't want to go anywhere to fancy, so they went to a nice little steak joint. It wasn't a four-star restaurant, but the food was very good and the staff was pleasant. Gara had ordered a steak with some mashed potatoes covered in gravy and asparagus, a meal that any man would be happy to eat. Hanada ordered chicken alfredo, something simple but tasty. The only thing they really had to do now was think of something to talk about. While he wasn't sure if it was a good idea, Gara could think of one thing to talk about, so you're the heiress of the Hyuga Empire. Hanada figured that would be one of the subjects of interest, Yes, but there's not much I can tell you about that. The company hasn't really had any major scandals, we've been too smart to let something like that happen. I'm likely going to take over once my father steps down, although many people feel like my cousin Neji should be one taking control. He's a little better at running a business than I am. Gara had a hard time believing that, are you sure about that? You're easily one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. Hanada blushed a little at the compliment. I'm not going to lie, I'm probably a little smarter than Neji is, but he's much more cold-blooded than I am. Thing is, I just don't have it in me to screw over other companies to get what I want. Gara didn't really think that was a flaw, I think that's to be admired. It's nice to see that in such a cutthroat business some people still have a heart. Well thank you, Hanada said, putting a hand on Gara's hand, causing him to blush. Naruto told me that you're kind of the same way. You only take jobs out on people that you've checked out and made sure deserve to be, well, you know. That's not something all people have the honor to do. Gara's blush got a little deeper, I do what I can, if nothing else. Hanada wanted to talk about something other than her, well it's nice if you ask me. So why don't you tell me a little more about yourself? How did you get into your particular line of work? Gara knew she was mainly asking how he became an assassin which was really one hell of a story. It was almost like something out of a movie script, it actually goes all the way back to the day I was born. There were complications with my birth, and my mother ended up dying as a result. My father blamed me and he wasn't afraid to say it. While he spoiled my brother and sister, he treated me like I was the family dog. Hanada gasped a little bit. She realized that he never brought up his father before this, that's horrible. I never would have guessed from how close your brother and sister was. Gara didn't see any reason to tell her, it's not something I like to talk about. Anyways, Konkuro and Tamari loved me dearly and hated the way father treated me. They became what kept me sane throughout that time. Eventually, he even began to beat me. That was straw that broke the camel's back for both me and my siblings. Hanada was on the edge of her seat, so what did you guys do? Gara told her how it all went down, I was just 13 at the time and me and my siblings sat down to formulate a plan. One night, when my father sat down for his nightly drink, he was a scotchman if I remember correctly, Konkuro crushed up sleeping pills and slipped them into his drink. After that, we toyed with some electrical outlets in the house to make them unstable. We made that house burn down and made it look as though my father died in a tragic accidental fire. Thanks to those sleeping pills, he never woke up to try and escape. That's an incredible story Gara. but how did that cause you to become a hitman? Hanada asked, still a little shocked. Gara was getting to that part, well you see, there was only one person who didn't buy our little rouse. A man by the name of Shinyu who had spent his life getting rich off of others' misery. He made one fatal mistake though, and that was underestimating me. Before the house burned down, I took out my father's old revolver that he'd never had registered. 
when he came by the foster house that we'd been placed at to try and blackmail us for the insurance money we got from father, I put a bullet in his head. I said that he tried to rape me and just sort of told them the truth about the gun. The only thing that I changed was I said I'd taken it out the night before the fire because I just wanted to look at it and just never gave it to the cops after the fire. Hanada was still lost, this is story is very interesting, but are you gonna get to the part about becoming an assassin soon? Gara supposed that he was rambling, well he was a hated by just about everyone, so when I killed him I was made a town hero. I was showered with praise and was called a local hero, even given some gifts. Hell, it was great. So I decided that I'd start killing bad men for gain for the rest of my life. Hanada could see how he ended up where he did, that's amazing Gara, you're amazing. Gara looked to see that their food had arrived, I'm honored that you think so. Shall we eat? Hanada grabbed her fork, I'd like that. Just so you know, I'm having a wonderful time. Gara's heart soared at hearing that, you have no idea how happy I am to hear you say that. When Naruto woke up, he found the Kurama was still laying next to him but Fu was gone. He got up and found a note taped to his mirror. It was from Fu, Dear Naruto, sorry about leaving so soon. I forgot that I was gonna go and see my uncle today. Guess it was a good thing I started leaving clothes here. I was gonna wake you up and tell you I left, but you just looked so peaceful sleeping with Kurama. I'll come by in a little bit, Fu. Naruto finished reading the letter from Fu and saw that Kurama was starting to wake up too. He walked over sat next to him, stroking his fur, looks like she's gonna be out for a while. There's nothing new with the Madara stuff either, so it looks like a pretty good time to go and introduce you to your vet. Does that sound good? Kurama put his head in Naruto's lap. The fox didn't respond it, as it had no idea what a vet was. Naruto was gonna take him not matter what the fox said anyways, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. I'll get changed and go get your collar. Kurama jumped off the bed and Naruto started to put on some clean clothes. When he turned around, the fox had his lease in his mouth and it was connect to his collar, holy shit, just how smart are you? Kurama just blinked a couple of time and set the lease down at Naruto's feet. Naruto grabbed it and slid at his pet's neck, come on. Let's go introduce you to some of my friends. Naruto started to walk out of his room and to the door, but he noticed a small bag with a note on the table. Fu again, just wanted to remind you that Kurama is probably gonna be hungry when you wake up. Naruto hadn't thought about that. He grabbed the bag and got a Tupperware bowl from the cupboard. All right, we'll get something to eat and then take you to meet my friends. Kurama yipped happily, which caused Naruto to smile. He may not have had him long but he already loved this little fox. Fu really had forgotten about her meeting with Kakuzu. She had gotten so excited when she gave Naruto his gift, she completely forgot she had anything else to do. Luckily, she woke up just in time to get dressed and go see her uncle. She got to his office and didn't even bother to knock, rather she just walked right in. Kakuzu was sitting at his desk, the red-haired Sasori and black and green-haired Pakura were both tinkering with their hobbies poison and fire, and Hidan was on the phone mumbling about something. As soon as she got inside, Fu started apologizing, sorry I'm a little bit late, I overslept. Kakuzu raised an eyebrow, it's the middle of the day, how long have you been sleeping? Fu laughed nervously, I accidentally fell asleep, so I guess it's not actually oversleeping, doesn't matter. How are you doing? Kakuzu started to light a cigar, not too bad I guess, been making a pretty good amount of cash as of late. Fu took the cigar out of his mouth, sorry but you don't get to do that while I'm here. I made Naruto quit smoking, and I'd make you quit too if I could. Kakuzu set his lighter down and sighed, fine, so how is everything going with the kings? Fu sat down while trying to think of how to put this, well I'd love to tell you about that, I'm not really supposed to. Seriously, Naruto said that we can't tell anybody about this stuff. Kakuzu felt a little hurt, are you saying that you don't trust me? Fu quickly explained, no, it's not that. It's just that we know that there's a spy in our midst and we can't risk anything being overheard by a third party. Kakuzu felt a little better, huh, I guess I can understand this, well shit, half the reason I had you come here was so that you could tell me about this stuff. I'm not sure what to talk about now. 
Fu was more than able to come up with something, I've got something. I hate to ask you to do this, but I was wondering if. Kakuzu cut her off. No. Fu pouted. You haven't even. Kakuzu repeated. No. Fu frowned. Will you at least? Kakuzu sounded like a broken record. No. Fu finally yelled. Just let me finish a damn sentence. Kakuzu found it a little bit funny, I suppose, but you'd better not say what I think you're going to. Fu hated to ask him for this, some of the kings are likely going to ask you for money. All I'm asking is that you give them the amount they want with the usual interest rate. Just make it so that they don't have to pay it back right away. You know they're good for it, they just need more time. Kakuzu leaned back in his chair, thinking deeply, hum. I was expecting you to ask me to just give them the money. Fu wasn't that stupid, I'd never ask you to do that, it wouldn't be fair. Kakuzu scratched his chin, well, I suppose since the kings have so much influence in the crime world, I can cut them a one-time deal. They're a major source of business for me anyways. Fu walked over and gave her uncle a big hug, thanks uncle Kakuzu, you're the best. Kakuzu just had to hug her back, yeah, I know. Once Kurama had eaten his fill and Naruto had called Kiba to warn him they were coming, the two got in the car and headed off. Naruto had feeling that Kiba and Ino, much like him, were going to love the little fella. He wasn't driving to Vet's office, just Kiba's apartment. All Naruto was doing was trying to make sure that Kurama trusted Kiba when the time came that the fox would need medical attention, so no actual equipment was required. When they got the building, Naruto started to walk up the stairs and used the lease to make Kurama follow him. While the little fox did okay with getting up the stairs, his legs were still a little small and it made things difficult. Naruto decided to just pick him up and carry him the rest of the way. Naruto went to knock on the door, but Ino opened it before he could. She squealed in joy and grabbed Kurama, oh, you are just so cute. Kiba told me you guys were coming. Look at his fur, it's so pretty. He's got such big eyes too, I just love him. Kurama looked a little scared, so Naruto started to scratch him behind the ears to calm him down, you shouldn't scream like that Ino, it makes him nervous. Ino looked apologetically at the fox, oops, sorry little guy. Kurama licked Ino's face a little as if to say it was okay. Ino giggled as Kiba appeared, she loves small animals. I think that's half the reason she agreed to date me in the first place. That did score you some points with me, yes, Ino joked at him, then looked at Kurama, I think it's time for you to meet your doctor. Naruto was a little nervous as watched Ino hand his new pet to Kiba, be careful with him. He's really small and he gets nervous around new people. Kiba looked at Kurama and grinned, showing off his larger than usual canine teeth, don't worry man, I deal with animals smaller than him all the time. I know what to do. Kurama saw Kiba's teeth and for some reason it seemed to make the animal trust him more. He yipped happily and looked as though he approved of his the vet. Ino knew it would go well, ah, it looks like he likes you Kiba. Kiba sat him down on the ground and started to play with him a bit. He gently tapped Kurama's nose and made pretend snaps at him while the fox retaliated with play bites of his own, yeah, I knew that he would. Naruto scratched the back of his head and looked at the two happily. He was already glad that he picked Kiba as Kurama's vet. His new favorite fox seemed safe in his hands. Before long, Naruto got on the ground and started to play with him too, mimicking Kiba's behavior. It was going to be a fun afternoon. Fu and Kakuzu had switched from talking about business to talking about more personal things. They discussed how Fu's relationship was going and how Kakuzu's health was, both of which were doing pretty well all in all. The only thing that seemed to be going wrong for the two of them right now was their businesses. Sasori was still focused on making a new variation of his favorite poison and Hidan was reading some kind of weird looking book with some symbols on it, but Pakura had stopped playing with matches and was actually listening to what they had to say. When Fu mentioned that she was considering heading to one of her favorite restaurants for dinner, Pakura piped up, huh, that's the place Zabuza is taking me tonight. Everyone knew who Zabuza was, so they turned and asked at the same time, you and Zabuza. Pakura didn't see what the big deal was, yes, we happen to be quite fond of each other. He finds my love of flame cute and I find ability to kill quite impressive. Fu just had to shake her head, 
it's kind of weird that those are considered to be desirable traits in the business we're in. Kakuzu didn't see it that way, our line of work is all about blood, guts, and money. They try and make it look all glamorous in the movies, but in the end we're just trying to survive. If you can survive around here, money just kind of tends to find you. Like I said though, you have to live to get it. Fu knew what he said was true, yeah, that's why we created the Nine Kings. Most of us would be dead now if it wasn't for everything we've set up. I just hope we're all still alive when the dust clears, ya know. Kakuzu knew it all right. It's a miracle I've lived as long as I have, that's for sure. Fu looked at her watch, you're one old mother, that's for sure. How you've done it, I've got no clue. Hey, I'm gonna have to go Uncle Kakuzu, it was really great getting to see you again though. I don't want to keep Naruto waiting for too long. Kakuzu stood up and hugged Fu goodbye, that's fine, just don't be a stranger. Come by as soon as you can. Fu waved bye to the others as she walked to the door, I always do. Sasuke looked around the room he was standing in to see it had become a completely bloody mess. He had an Uzi with a silencer in his hand which was covered with blood, his clothes had dots of blood on them as well. The blood had begun to soak into the carpet as well. Orochimaru looked around the room in approval, I just hoping you could protect me, but you've gone above and beyond with this little stunt. Sasuke looked at Orochimaru and glared at him, you didn't tell me that drugs were stored right in Gato's freaking safe house. You're lucky I decided to bring my Uzi for crying out loud. I was planning on just bringing a handgun until I got a bad feeling about this stuff. Looks like I was right. Orochimaru shrugged it off and opened the briefcase on the dying Gato's desk, oh well, I've got what I need. These should be perfect for my experiments. Gato was laying on the ground trying to talk. I'll get. Dot you, damn it. Orochimaru. Sasuke walked over to him and pointed the Uzi at his head, shut the up you penguin wannabe. He fired off one one shot into Gato's head and Orochimaru asked, penguin wannabe. Sasuke just kind of shrugged, the penguin, you know from Batman. He's all short and he's a crime lord. Orochimaru suddenly got it, oh yes, now I see it. Very funny Mr. Uchiha very funny indeed. Thanks, I guess, Sasuke said nonchalantly, is that everything that you need? Orochimaru was still looking around the room and was more than satisfied, nope, this all seems pretty much perfect to me. You and I should work together more often. We'd have an awful lot of fun. Sasuke took a few steps back, are you coming on to me? Orochimaru ground his teeth in anger, no, I'm not coming on to you. I was just saying that the two of us could have some dark, bloody fun, that's all. Sasuke strapped the Uzi to his back, I don't kill for pleasure, I kill for profit. Orochimaru didn't approve, tisk tisk, so much wasted potential. You could do so much with the skill you have. Sasuke wanted to puke at the very thought of working with this guy, I think I'll just keep working solo, but thanks. Orochimaru closed the briefcase and picked it up, oh well. I suppose that it'll be enough fun to just hear about your exploits. Sasuke still felt like this guy was hitting on him, which creeped the shit out of him as a straight man, but didn't say anything. Doing all of this for Orochimaru was sure fire way to gain Madara's trust. It was just the next step in making sure everyone was safe. Killer B wasn't in the best mood right now. His brother seemed absolutely certain that if left to his own devices, B would find a way to, to get into trouble. B was a little insulted by that. Granted, he didn't always make the best choices, but B wasn't a total fool. He could take care of himself just fine. B was cooped up in his office right now, waiting for it to finishing looking over his plan so that he could approve them. That was one of the problems with having your brother as your bodyguard. You couldn't just tell him to off, you just had to wait and listen, man this ns. A really needs to stop causing such a ruckus. He looked at the wall to see his line of various alcohols all stacked up on the wall. Most of them were gifts from his clients, drug lords who were pleased with the deals he'd given them. In the span of a week he usually got four or five bottles of various liquors. People knew that he didn't do drugs, but he loved a nice drink. So, to stay on good terms with him, that's what they sent. They didn't always send a note with them, but B was happy to receive them. There were two news ones today, 
one decent bottle of whiskey and one very nice bottle of bourbon, B's favorite. He picked up the bottle and poured himself a glass, A's acting like A, so I'll just get licked. Ah yeah, that one didn't even make sense to me. He just took a sip of the bourbon and sighed happily. Bourbon was always something he loved, although this one didn't seem to love him back. Before he knew what was going on, B started to cough and found it hard to breath. He fell to the ground and a heard the thump from the other room. Soon he ran into the room and saw his brother was hacking up a lung on the floor. A grabbed his phone and dialed as fast as he could, Hello Naruto. It's B, something's wrong with him. I think someone sent him a tainted bottle of bourbon. Can I take him to see Tsunade? Naruto quickly said, Of course, I'll call her right away. Just get B there. A hung up and picked up his brother, Come on B. Don't you daring do this to me. You've gotta make it. With that a ran out of the room and prayed he could make it to Tsunade in time. His brother's life could very well be hanging in the balance. Tsunade Senju was one of the finest medical professionals ever to be put on the face of the earth. She could diagnose almost any disease, knew the best possible treatment for just about anything, and was even a very talented surgeon. Anyone would be more than happy to be in her very capable hands. However, she'd only recently picked up her old profession once again. After the death of her lover Dan to the same fatal disease that took her little brother, Tsunade went into a dark depression. All she had been able to do was try and drink her pain away. That all changed when Naruto formed the Nine Kings. Jiraiya had told Naruto about Tsunade and the young man felt very bad for her. Not to mention he was good friends with Jiraiya and it was clear how much Tsunade's drinking hurt him. It had taken a lot of doing, but Naruto did manage to get Tsunade off the bottle. He reminded her so much of her little brother that she just couldn't stop herself from listening to him. Now she was Naruto's personal doctor, taking care of him and doing favors whenever he needed him to. He needed a big favor right now, since B was almost on death's doorstep. She had set up a small office for herself, with the help of Naruto's money, and she had more than enough equipment in it to take care of B. I was pacing back and forth outside the office door, praying that his brother would be alright. Naruto and Fu came running up to him. They began to bombard him with questions, what's up with B? Is he okay? What the hell happened? A snapped at them, he's dying, I don't know if he's okay, and it looks like that sick Madara sent him some kind tainted bourbon. Naruto and Fu realized I wasn't in the mood for questions right now. Fu apologized, sorry A. Eh? We're just worried about our friend, that's all. There were chairs outside the office and a sat down in one of them, I didn't mean to snap at you like that. I just don't want to lose my brother. Dot who else is coming? Naruto had almost forgotten about that part, Gar is coming, but all of the other kings were busy right now. I didn't tell them much, just that B was in the hospital. I was happy that anyone was coming to see B at all, I'm glad that someone else cares. A mumbled as a fox came out of nowhere and jumped in his lap, what the hell? The fox put his paws on the large man's chest and started to lick his face. Naruto laughed and began to explain, that's my fox, Kurama. Animals are really good at reading human emotion, so he was just trying to cheer you up. I wanted to be his usual grouchy self, but just couldn't do it, would you get off of, oh, what the hell? A started to pet the fox while Naruto and Fu just watched with amusement. Soon Gara came as well, very confused at the sight, what in the? Naruto just waved it off, I'll tell you about it later. We don't know how B's doing yet, we're just waiting for Tsunade to come out and tell us. Speak of the devil, that's right when Tsunade came out, her blonde hair was tied back in a ponytail and she was wearing green scrubs, son of bitch, that was a hard one. I put Kurama down and asked urgently, is B okay? Is he gonna make it? Tsunade leaned back on the wall and sighed, yeah, you got him here just in time. A couple minutes longer and he could have very well died. I raised his hand up and shook Tsunade's, thank you so much. Just, thank you so much. Tsunade didn't think anything of it, I'm happy to do it. Any friend of Naruto's is a friend of mine. A motion to the door, can I go in and see him? Tsunade smiled and nodded, of course. He's awake, but I don't know for how much longer. Just don't get him too riled up, he's still a little weak. 
I didn't need to hear any more. He opened the door and went right in to see his brother. Naruto turned to Tsunade and gave her a quick hug, like he said Tsunade, thanks. I owe you one. Tsunade felt he didn't owe her anything, but still accepted the hug, come on Naruto, you know I love to help you. Nice to see you guys too, Fu, Gara. Fu gave a little wave and said, hi. Gara gave a more somber nod and a brief, hello. Naruto had one big question on his mind right now, what the hell was in that bourbon that he had that kind of reaction to? Tsunade had a hard time figuring that out herself, that took me a while to figure out. His throat was closing up and I remembered in his file that he's allergic to certain types medications, Naruto had given Tsunade all of the king's files, so I stopped looking for poisons and started treating it like an allergic reaction. Lo and behold, he started to get better. Fu scratched her chin, wait, how did this guy know what kind of medication B was allergic to? That was another one Tsunade could answer easily, it wouldn't be hard to figure out for someone with access to medical records. Any doctor could figure it out. Naruto mumbled under his breath, Orochimaru, that son of bitch did it again. Tsunade heard the name almost instantly, did you just say Orochimaru? Naruto hated the man, and he'd never even met him, yup, your old buddy from the coroner's office has been causing us a lot of problems. Tsunade didn't exactly like the way Naruto had put that, even if it had been sarcastically, believe me, we're not buddies. That man is a ing psycho who should be shot between the eyes. What does he have to do with any of this? Naruto mulled over how much he wanted to tell her, well, I can't tell you everything, but most of the Orochimaru stuff I'll fill you in on. Do me a favor and don't tell anyone else about this stuff. We're trying to keep it really hush hush right now, ya know. Tsunade waved his worries off, yeah yeah, just get to the point already. Naruto could see she was eager, so he started to tell her what she wanted to know. She knew a little bit of it already, since I had to tell her a few things to save B, but most of what Naruto said was new to Tsunade. Once Naruto finished speaking, she just kind of shook her head, I knew he'd never just go clean. He was doing some pretty ed up things when he was a coroner, I just couldn't prove it. Naruto had heard the same thing from Jiraiya, he's a slippery little snake. That he is. B's doing fine now, you guys should probably go and the tell the other kings that he's alright, Tsunade said before she walked away. Gara reminded everyone that he was there by saying, she's right Naruto. This is the first time a king's life's been gone after, and they need reassurance that it wasn't successful. Fu was wondering something, didn't Jiraiya say that Madara probably wasn't gonna try and kill us? Naruto had already figured that one out, he was proving a point. Madara was making sure that we knew, if we wanted us dead, we'd be dead. Right now he doesn't know that we know who he is, so he thinks that we think he's just a mysteriously powerful stranger. Gara's head hurt just from listening to that, Naruto, what the air are you talking about? Even Fu was lost, sweetie, you're not making a ton of sense right now. Naruto was starting to understand how Jiraiya felt when he was explaining thing, just let me call the other king and I'll tell them what happened. I don't want us meeting up right now and getting into a huge argument, so a call seems like the best choice. Gara and Fu agreed, okay, but we'll make some of the calls too. It'll go by faster that way. Naruto wasn't going to argue, sounds good. Let's get this damn thing over with. I just know all of these guys are gonna be pissed. When Kakashi got into the precinct, he quickly found that it was gonna be a rough day. Yamato was on the phone and he looked very excited, which told Kakashi that things were about to get complicated for him and Naruto. He saw Yamato hung up the phone and then came right for him, Kakashi, you're not gonna believe this. I think I've got something that could lead me to how I'm gonna take down Naruto. Kakashi let out a small, irritated groan and took a sip of his coffee, damn it Yamato, how many times do I need to tell you? Drop this thing already before you shoot your own career in the head. Yamato just kept grinning, you've gotta hear what I've got to say first. I just got off the phone with a friend of mine and he said that Naruto went to visit a suspected drug dealer named Killer B. Maybe he's using or maybe he's dealing, but I'm sure Naruto involved somehow. Kakashi brought his hand up and smacked Yamato in the back of the head, I've said it once and I'll say it again, drop it. You keep going off from ifs and maybes. 
You've brought that guy in so many times that any jury would be sure you've got a personal vendetta against him. Thanks to you, we'll need mountain of evidence just to have a chance at convicting him. Yamato tried to object, but, Kakashi wasn't interested in what he had to say, no, go find another case to work. If you keep up this shit with Naruto, you're going to get kicked off the force and I'm not going to help you if you do. Yamato wanted to keep objecting, but chose not to. It was just too futile. Once he'd walked away, Rin came up behind Kakashi, you were awfully hard on him. Kakashi scoffed, I'm just trying to protect him and Naruto. I've got both of their best interests at heart. Rin knew that was true, fair enough. So Naruto's at the hospital. Kakashi didn't wait to hear anything, he's at the hospital. Why am I just finding out about this now? I swear, if Madara did anything to him, all. Rin could see she hadn't started that right, whoa, slow down Kakashi. He's just there to visit B. I guess Yamato wasn't clear about that part. Kakashi nearly had a heart attack, no, he wasn't. Don't ing scare me like that Rin. Rin felt a little bad, sorry about that. Jeez Kakashi, I've never seen you get that worried before. Kakashi rolled his eyes, well yeah, I thought Naruto might be hurt. It was like it was happening all over again. Rin caught that last part, what was happening all over again? Kakashi suddenly realized that he'd said too much, nothing, I was just talking to myself. Rin couldn't let this go, it's not nothing Kakashi. Tell me what you meant by, it was like it was happening all over again. Kakashi wanted to try and talk his way out of this one, but he knew better than to try that on Rin, come on Rin, you know what I'm talking about. My father, my captain, and Obito, three of the most important people in my life, have all gotten hurt. It seems to follow those that are around me. I know Obito didn't get physically hurt, but I still feel like his life was ruined because of me. Rin hadn't ever seen this side of Kakashi, wow, you really feel like that stuff was your fault, don't you? Kakashi could see a pretty clear pattern, of course I do. That's the whole reason I didn't take Naruto right off the bat. My father killed himself and Minato was blown the hell up. I didn't really have a good father track record. Rin found the whole thing insane, Kakashi, why didn't you just come and talk to me about all this? I'm sure we could have worked something out. Kakashi found that unlikely, yeah, I'd tell you that I'm a horrible person who gets everyone around him hurt. That seems like a real good idea. Rin gave a Kakashi a light smack on the back of the head, you're not a bad person, you're just an idiot sometimes. Kakashi started to pull out his phone, fair enough I guess. I've gotta call Sasuke and get an update. It's been a couple of days, so hopefully he's made at least a little bit of progress with the whole Madara thing. Rin couldn't interrupt that, you do that. Hopefully we'll get some good news from him. Like maybe that we can put a bullet in that crazy old, s head, Kakashi muttered as he started to dial. Sasuke told Kakashi everything he could when he called, which was a surprising amount considering it had just a couple of days. Madara was very pleased with Sasuke work and he'd definitely warmed up to the boy a little bit. Still though, Sasuke didn't feel comfortable enough to ask Madara where the info was yet. It was a good start, but he still had a ways to go. They weren't on the phone for long because Kakashi didn't want to get noticed on his cell phone for too long and Sasuke was supposed to go and visit with Madara again. He had another thing to ask of Sasuke, which the young man was happy to do. Anything to keep the ball rolling for them. Before long Sasuke was walking through the empty halls of Madara's mansion. He had already thought of some things to say to Madara once he found him, something that would get his oversized ego going. That was the best way to get to Madara making his head even bigger than it had been before. Once Sasuke got into his room, Madara started in on him, there you are Sasuke. I must say, you did very well. If you keep this up, we'll have the kings taken down in no time. Sasuke had to fight to keep from rolling to his eyes, that would be the point of all this. So didn't you say you had some kind of job for me? Madara grinned at him, right to the point, I like it. Yes, I've set up another task for you to complete. You see, money is no longer going to be an issue for the kings, we're going to have to focus on the physical attacks from now on. Sasuke of course had to ask, how do you know money is no longer going to be an issue for them? Madara figured he should explain that, 
Fu is apparently the niece of a famous black market money lender named Kakuzu. He's agreed to extend his usual due date for the kings at Fu's request. They'll still pay him back, he's just giving them more time than he usually does. Sasuke saw he had an opportunity to ask a very important question, how in the hell do you know all of this? Madara mulled over whether or not he wanted to give the full truth to his grandson, I've got a mole who's telling me all of this. Sasuke decided to take a calculated risk, who the hell were you able to turn that knew that much? I thought Naruto's organization was all secretive and shit. You've gotta be pretty damn smart to pull that off. Sasuke's plan to buff up Madara's ego worked, as he just had to brag after hearing that. You see, the beauty of it is, my mole's not even actually in the king's organization. Wait a minute, how could someone in not in King's organization know that much? Sasuke started to ask, then realized something, Kakuzu. Fu must be telling him things and one of his men is overhearing it or something. That's how you've gotten all this info. Madara was impressed that Sasuke had figured it out. Kakuzu would never turn on his niece, but one of his men is more than willing to, for the right price. Sasuke wanted to ask specifically who it was, but he wasn't stupid enough to ask. That would get Madara to suspicious. He would call Kakashi as soon as he could and tell Kakuzu to start checking out his men. For now, he needed to keep up the rouse with Madara, man, that's all pretty genius. So anyways, back to the matter at hand, what did you want me to do for you this time? Madara had something special in mind for this one, this one is for that bitch Yugito. I had to deal with her back when I worked in the business world, and she's one of the most insufferable people I've ever met. She was always certain she was right, screwed me over at every chance she got, and had an ego that was bigger than her actual company. Have you ever had to deal with someone like that? Sasuke could think of someone, but didn't say so that he could keep himself out of trouble, no, not that I can think of. Madara really hated Yugito, thanks to your work with Gato, I've got something perfect set up for her. I'm assuming that you left no physical evidence at the crime scene. Sasuke almost felt a little insulted that he would even ask, I'm more than good enough not to leave anything behind. What does Gato have to do with Yugito? Madara got an evil smirk on his face, Gato did some work with Yugito for some of his more legal business ventures. Thanks to their business relationship, I've got just what I need to screw her over. Sasuke had a bad feeling about this, but he needed to do as Madara said, sounds good. What do I need to do? While Sasuke was busy hearing about who all he had to with this time, Zabuza was waiting for his date to arrive at the restaurant. Zabuza and Pakura had begun to date under Sir stance that definitely wouldn't be considered normal. It had all started a month ago when someone who worked for Yugura had borrowed money from Kakuzu and was completely unable to pay it back. Kakuzu was going to rip his heart out like he did to everyone who didn't pay, but Yugura still needed the guy. After much arguing, the two settled on a deal that would allow Yugura's man to live. If either Zabuza or Kisame agreed to help Pakura with a little something she'd been working on for Kakuzu, he'd let the debt go. Of course Zabuza and Kisame wouldn't be paid for this, which was a problem for Kisame. He didn't do anything for free. That pretty much meant Zabuza had to do it by default. Pakura was going to burn down a lone shark's building under Kakuzu's orders. The fool who owned the place had the balls to open a place like that in Kakuzu's territory. It was easy for him to take care off, thanks to Pakura's love of all things fire related. However, he needed some muscle to gun down a couple of guys who were gonna be standing in Pakura's way. No one too tough, it would just be kind of a pain if Pakura had to take them out and try and light a fire that couldn't be traced back to her. That was where Zabuza came in. He'd just kill the guys let Pakura do the rest. It all went just fine. In fact, it almost went a little too well. Zabuza couldn't help but notice the glint in Pakura's eyes as she burned the house to the ground and Pakura was amazed at the Zabuza's ability to kill a man without making so much as a sound. Without even thinking about it, he asked Pakura out for dinner and the two hit it off even more. One night in bed together later and the two had been dating ever since. As Zabuza was thinking about all this, Pakura got to the restaurant and sat down with her boyfriend at the table, Hello Zabuza, sorry I'm late. There was a building burning on my way here and I got rather distracted. Zabuza should have known, haha, that's my little firebug. So how've you been? Pakura shrugged, same shit, 
different day. You know how it is. Zabuza didn't feel like that today, I wish. Yagura borrowed money for Kakuzu, but he didn't borrow enough to pay for me and Kisami's services. He said that he only wanted to take out enough to pay for what he absolutely had to. What an asshole. I swear, if there was a job out there for me that would pay even close to what Yagura usually does, I'd blow his head off in a second. Pakura liked Kakuzu quite a bit, so she couldn't really relate, maybe you'll get that chance one day. I love my job. Zabuza scoffed a little and took a sip of his drink, well ya, yeah, you get do what you love and your boss treats you good. Mine's a ing selfish nut job. Pakura smiled a little bit, my boss is the best of the best. He lets me do almost anything that I wish, as long as it doesn't come back to bite him in the ass later. Zabuza raised his eyebrows a little bit, I'll tell you one thing, I'd like to bite that tight little ass of yours. Pakura blushed a little, but giggled too. Maybe later, if you're lucky, she said as her phone went off. She pulled up and answered a text, or maybe not. Zabuza looked a little heartbroken, oh come on, what's wrong now? Pakura looked a little distraught, Kakuzu wants to see me right away. He says is that it's super important. No way I can let him wait. Zabuza just couldn't catch a break today, great, so another thing doesn't pan out today. Pakura stood up to leave, but gave him a little kiss on the cheek before she did, I promise to come over later and work all that stress out of you. How does that sound? Zabuza's mood got a lot better when he heard that, now that's more like it. Drop by my place whenever you like. I always do, Pakura said, as she walked away. Kakuzu had never been this angry in his entire life. His blood was boiling with rage, more rage than he even knew he could feel. One of his men had betrayed him. Him of all people, didn't they know who he was? He was one of the most important people in all of the Konoha crime world. How dare they try and play him like that? He'd just gotten a call from Naruto 15 minutes ago, and apparently his mole had managed to get Madara to admit that the leak was in Kakuzu's organization. When he thought about it, it actually made perfect sense. No one would think to look at his people after all. As he paced angrily around his his office, Pakura knocked on the door and opened it. She poked her head inside, Hey Kakuzu, is this a good time? No, but come in anyways, Kakuzu grumbled. Pakura may not have been great at reading emotions, but she could tell Kakuzu was upset easily enough, what's so important sir? You seem pretty pissed off about something. Kakuzu smashed his hand on his desk, pissed off. I'm way beyond pissed off. Pakura took a couple of steps back, okay, I get the idea. What the hell happened? Kakuzu grabbed a lamp of his desk and smashed it, one of my men ing betrayed me. They listened into what Fu and I were talking about and sold the ing information to people who were after Fu. Pakura got nervous all of a sudden, wait, are you saying that you think it's me? Kakuzu figured that'd be her first question, of course not, if I thought it was you I would've killed you already. You weren't here the day Fu told me about that art, so there's no way you could've been the one who sold me out. Pakura calmed down, oh thank god, I'd like my heart to stay in my chest. So if not me, then who? Kakuzu had thought all of this through, the only people who knew enough to pull all this off are Hidan and Sasori. Problem is, I have no clue which one it was. Neither of them have given me enough of a reason to trust them, but they haven't said anything that would make me think they're traitors either. I've got nothing to work with here. Pakura felt a little bad for him, but had to ask, why did you call me? What do I think I could do about all this? Kakuzu was counting on her, both of those men are worth a hell of a lot of money. If I just killed them both, it would take me ages to replace them. They wouldn't admit anything if I just interrogated them and it'd cost me money if I tortured them, mainly because I'd have to pay for the one who survives hospital bills. Pakura knew that was. Kakuzu didn't mess around when he wanted info out of someone, are you saying that you want me to investigate this and I find out if it was Sasori or Hidan? Kakuzu had a feeling she'd get the whole thing figured out, I want you to find out which one it is and kill them. Pakura looked excited, I've just got one question. Kakuzu already knew what she was gonna ask, yes, you can burn them to death. Pakura grinned victoriously, that's all I need to know. I'll burn the shit out of the bastard. Considering he wanted this guy to suffer, Kakuzu knew he'd chosen correctly, sounds perfect. 
I'm assuming that you'll be able to figure out who it is one your own. I've got some things of my own I need to work on, so I can't help you much. Pakura didn't need help, I'll be able to figure out who it is without any problem. They won't even know I've got them figured out until I'm standing next to them with the match. Kakuzu was feeling a little better now, that'll work out just fine. That's all I need from you for now. I hope that I didn't take up too much of your time. Pakura remembered that Zabuza was likely still up. No, it's fine. I can still salvage the night pretty easily. I'll see you later. Kakuzu waved by to her as she left. All right, see you later. Pakura started to leave and she called Zabuza. Hey Zabuza, you still feel like meeting up tonight? Zabuza more than felt like it. Do you even have to ask? Meet me at my place in like 15 minutes. I'll give a workout you'll never forget. I'll be there soon. We'll see who works out who, Pakura warned him and hung up. It was still gonna be a fun night. The next morning, Naruto was finally starting to feel like he was making some headway against Madara. They almost had his mole pinned down, which would be a huge victory. If the mole wasn't there to watch feed Madara information, they might actually able to trick him into screwing himself over. That's why he was heading off to see Jiraiya. Naruto was hoping the old man could tell them what they should be doing once Madara's mole was taken out. Naruto had some smart people advising him, but it couldn't hurt to have Jiraiya's opinion on all this stuff. He got to Jiraiya's house and knocked on the door, just like he always did. However, Jiraiya didn't answer as quickly as he usually did. It was taking him more time than it really should, which had Naruto nervous. Did something happen to his surrogate grandfather? Finally Jiraiya answered the door, but he didn't look quite right. He was rubbing his head as if he was in a lot of pain. Damn it Naruto, why do you gotta knock so hard? Naruto figured he must have a headache and looked pretty nauseous. Shit man, did you get drunk last night? Did you figure that one out all on your own genius? Jiraiya growled and motioned for Naruto to come inside. It had been a while since Naruto had seen Jiraiya like this, what did you get drunk for? Something happened last night. Jiraiya went into the kitchen and poured himself a cup of coffee, don't you remember what's coming up? Oh, did you want a cup? Naruto could use some coffee, thanks, that'd be great. What's coming up? Jiraiya handed Naruto one cup and took the other, it's almost October kid. Yesterday marked 25 years since Minato first told me he was gonna be made captain and it was almost time for Kashina to have you. That had completely slipped Naruto's mind, wow, it's that time again already. I'm gonna be 25 soon, aren't I? Jiraiya took a sip of his coffee, hoping the caffeine would soothe his head, yes, you will be. I was thinking about that last night and hopeful seemed. He was gonna change everything. Now he's just gone. Dot and everything's gone to hell. Naruto really wanted to cheer him up. Oh come man, it's not all bad. We're finally starting to get Madara back a little bit. Everything's gonna be fine soon. Jiraiya just kept sipping on his coffee. That's not what I meant kid. I was talking about you and Kakashi. You're a ing crime lord and he's a dirty cop for shit's sake. Minato wouldn't have wanted any of this and he'd hate me for letting it happen. Naruto felt a little ping of guilt when he said that, come on, you know that I'm happy. I've got you and Fu, Kakashi and Rin a little bit too. Jiraiya looked down into his coffee cup and muttered, I'm worried about the kind of person you are. Minato fought and died to stop the very thing you're becoming. How am I supposed to feel about that? Quote dot dot dot, I really don't know, Naruto told him honestly, this is just who I've kind of become. The only way I've ever been able to find success in this world is through crime. It's all I know how to do. Jiraiya knew that was the truth, doesn't mean that I feel any better. I could teach you Yano. I could help learn how to get out of that life. Naruto scratched the back of his head, Jiraiya, you know that I can't do that. Jiraiya sighed and sipped his coffee, yeah I know. So what did you come here for? Naruto wasn't worried about Madara anymore. He just wanted to cheer up Jiraiya, don't worry about it. How about we do something fun for today? We could go see a movie, go to a shooting range, something like that. Jiraiya didn't object to the idea, but he didn't seem super excited about it either, alright, that sounds like it'd be nice. Naruto could see that he needed to pull out the big guns, will you excuse me for just a second? 
I need to call someone real quick. Sure, my coffee needs a couple of minutes to kick in anyways, Jiraiya told him. Naruto stood up and went to a side room to make his call. It took a couple of seconds, but the person on the other end soon answered, Hello. Naruto was she answered, Hey Tsunade, it's Naruto. I'm at Jiraiya's right now and I was wondering if you could come over and help me cheer him up. Cheer him up? What the hell's got the old pervert in a bad mood to begin with? Tsunade asked skeptically. Naruto explained what they'd been talking about and Tsunade started to feel kind of bad, well shit. I guess that I could come by and try to improve his mood. But if he starts to hit on me, Naruto didn't need her to finish, then you're free to leave. Just get here quick, I've never seen him depressed before. It's kind of creepy. After Naruto hung up, he spent the next 20 minutes trying to keep Jiraiya's mood from getting any worse. Naruto didn't blame the guy for seeming kind of upset. Nothing in his life went as he'd planned it. In fact, he was impressed with the man's ability to make the best out of what he'd been given. Yet, even guys like that needed to be cheered up from time to time. That's why Naruto was very glad when Tsunade finally arrived. When Jiraiya had gotten up to answer the door, Naruto told him to sit down and that he'd get it. It would be better if it was a surprise. He got the door and opened in up to see Tsunade dressed in casual clothing, a green tank top and sweatpants. Even at her age, she still looked damn good in them. Hey Tsunade, glad you could make. Jiraiya really needs some friends right now. Tsunade just walked in, whatever, not like I was doing anything else. So where is he? Before Naruto could answer, Tsunade walked right into the kitchen where Jiraiya was sitting, Hey Tsunade, what are you doing here? Tsunade had been hung over enough times to tell that Jiraiya had gotten shitfaced the night before, a little birdie told me that you've got a bad hangover, so I figured an old pro like me would be the best one to come over and help you. Mind if I get some coffee? Jiraiya shrugged, no, help yourself. Naruto sat back down his chair and Tsunade soon joined them, so what the hell's got your patinas up in a bunch? Naruto nearly spit out his coffee, way to be subtle there Tsunade. If you wanted subtle, then you should have called someone else, Tsunade said, taking a sip from her cup. Jiraiya looked at Tsunade and Naruto, what are you guys talking about? Sure I was a little down last night but I just had some bad memories come up. You guys must have felt like that before. Naruto couldn't deny that, I've got some bad memories of my time in foster care. Some of those assholes were rough. And I can't say that I never think about the day I watched Dan die in the hospital, Tsunade added in. Jiraiya felt the need to tell them, sure, it can be rough at times, but that's just life. You guys don't need to come and cheer me up just for that. I can handle myself just fine, I'm a grown man after all. Naruto thought about it for a second, but then said, I get that you don't need us to take care of you, but that's not why we do it in the first place. You're our family Jiraiya, we don't try and make feel better because we have to, we do it because we want to. Tsunade took a sip of her coffee and said, yeah, what the kid said. Jiraiya slowly started to smile, well, what else can I say to you guys but thank you. Naruto was glad he'd perked up a bit, but he didn't have much time to enjoy it. Out of nowhere, Naruto's cell phone started to go off like crazy. He hated how much he had to use the ink thing, I swear, I'm gonna smash it into a damn wall one of these days. He answered the phone and Jiraiya and Tsunade waited to see what he would say. All of a sudden Naruto groaned out loud, oh me, yeah, I'll be there as soon as I can. Jiraiya was wondering what the problem was now, another issue. Naruto got up and finished his cup of coffee, you got that right. Yugito's one of the prime suspects in a murder investigation. Tsunade couldn't help but ask, did she do it? No, she's innocent with this one. If she'd done it, she would have just told me, Naruto replied, understanding why Tsunade would ask. Yugito had done some pretty crazy things during her run as a crime lord. Apparently she used to work with a guy named Gato and the guy ripped her off on some deal. It was years ago, but it still qualifies as a motive. I don't know the full details yet, but supposedly there's some evidence that might point to her. They haven't charged her yet, but doesn't mean they won't. I've gotta go clear all of this shit up and figure out what's going on. Talk to you guys later. 
They both told him goodbye and the young blonde left to save his friend's ass. Jiraiya turned to Tsunade and asked, So did you really mean what you said before, about liking to cheer me up? Tsunade thought about lying, but she know better than to try that, yes, I do. Just don't let it go to your head. Jiraiya just smiled, don't wanna risk you smacking me, now do I. Tsunade gave him a playful glare from behind her coffee, no, you don't. They sat there quietly for a few seconds, and Tsunade looked at Jiraiya like she was waiting for something. Finally Jiraiya asked, what? I'm waiting for you to make some kind of perverted joke, Tsunade explained, you never miss a chance when you're around. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow, we were having a nice moment. You came all this way just to cheer me up and we had a great little chat. I just didn't want to ruin it for once. Tsunade looked shocked for a couple of seconds. The man was actually controlling his perverted nature. She mulled something over in her head for a few seconds, then took Jiraiya's hand and led him away from the table. Tsunade, what are you doing? Tsunade put a finger to his lips. You're being very sweet today, and to be honest, it's been a while for me. I haven't had sex since Dan left, and believe me, my body knows it. We're going to go upstairs and make love. However, you're not to tell anyone about this unless I say you can. Jiraiya tired to think of something to say, of course not, I would never do something like that. Tsunade knew he was telling the truth, I know that you wouldn't. Now come on. As she continued to lead him, Jiraiya wondered out loud, is this like a one-time thing, or what? Tsunade gave him a mischievous smirk, who knows? Maybe if this goes we'll make it a regular thing. Jiraiya picked her up bridal style, challenge accepted. Yugito really didn't know how to feel about all of was the closest she'd ever been to going to prison, and it was for a crime she didn't even commit. Sure, she and Gato had their problems in the past, but that was ages ago. He cost her $50,000, which was a lot of money to her back then. Now she wouldn't even bend over to pick up 50 grand. She didn't kill him, but how could she prove it damn it? While she was busy wondering, someone burst into her office unannounced. It was a beautiful woman with long black hair that Yugito thought she's seen with Naruto before, who the hell are you? What gives you the right to burst into my office? The one set her briefcase on a nearby desk, my name is Kurunai Yuhi and Naruto sent me. From this point forward, I'm your attorney. I've already got a great attorney, Yugito scoffed. Kurunai opened briefcase and started to thumb through it, not like me you don't. Sorry if I'm being frank here, but time is of the essence. I need you to tell me all of the evidence that they have on your right now that could connect you to Gato's murder. Yugito could see she wasn't in a position to negotiate, so she tried to remember, um, they said they had some emails and bank statements that could have pointed to me paying a hitman. Kurunai wrote that down on a pad of paper, substantial at best. The only motive they got is the money from back when you worked with Gato, correct? Yugito nodded dumbly, that's the only time I've ever talked to the guy, so yeah. Kurunai was feeling more and more confident, is that all, or is there more? Yugito kept trying to think, I don't know, the cops who talked to me wouldn't tell me shit. It was like talking to a wall. Kurunai knew what she was talking about, they didn't tell you anything that you didn't already know. That's how they do it. Give nothing, take everything and all that shit. If this is all they've got and they're just bluffing, you're safe. If this isn't a scare tactic and there's more, we could be in for trouble. My boyfriend, Asuma Serutobi, should be able to help me out with some of what I need. That's all I require from you right now. Thanks for your time. Yugito nearly asked more, but Kurunai practically ran out of the room. This wasn't a woman who went around. If she wanted something done, she got it done. There was only one thing Yugito could think to say as she left the room. Holy shit, Naruto's less than pleased voice echoed through his empty apartment as he talked with Kurunai on his phone. It had been a long day yesterday, but Naruto had seemed to have gotten everything straightened out. Kurunai had called Kakashi to get the down low on what all they had on Yugito, and it wasn't much. Apparently, Madara had Sasuke plant some old doents about Yugito and Gato right into the police's lap. It was enough to get them interested in Yugito and try to make her overplay her hand, but nothing more. There wasn't anything they had that Kurunai couldn't rip to shreds in court. Then there was the matter of Madara's mole, 
which Kakuzu said he was looking into right now. Hopefully he'd be able to find him fast so that the kings could start to go a little more on the offensive. Apparently, Hakura was going to work her ass off to make sure she had the right guy, then she was gonna flambe the mother. She'd have to do it in a way that made it look like an accident, but that wouldn't be too hard with a couple detectives' help. Of course there was also Sasuke, who was still trying to earn enough of Madara's trust to get the damn information he had on the kings away from him. Once they had the mole taken care of and got Madara's blackmail info, they would be able to put an end to the madness. All of this and on top of it he had Yudakata bitching to him about his prostitutes not going out to work because they were too afraid of getting killed or something. Naruto was a very busy man. Naruto finished up his calls and threw the overused phone onto the counter. He sat down on his couch and rubbed his eyes, this is way too much shit for one guy to deal with. His ears perked up when he heard a key going into his front door, telling him that Fu was here. Fu was the only person other than himself that had a key to his place, so it had to be her. She walked inside wearing her usual white skirt and white dress shirt, enough of her buttons were left undone to make her look more enticing, hey Naruto, you look kinda tired today. You don't know the half of, Naruto told her, I've had so much crap to straighten out these past few days, between the king's problems and Madara's attacks, it's been IGN maidening. Fu came over and sat down next to him, so you've been pretty busy. Naruto had been more than a little busy, it seems like I'm lucky if I get even an hour or two a day to relax. It's ing frustrating. Fu rubbed her boyfriend's shoulder sympathetically, poor guy, you need a day to just kick back and do something fun. Like a day to do whatever you want. Naruto felt a little like she was taunting him, well yeah, but I've got too much shit to do to just try and take a day off to do what I want. The other kings are breathing down my neck right now, expecting me to fix all of this shit for them. Fu used her hands to force him to look her in the eyes, well you're not going to fix it overnight. Just take a day off. There's not really anything you can do right now anyways. Please Naruto, for me. Naruto really didn't think he could say no to that but he tried at first, I don't know Fu, it's just. Fu stop him by giving him a long, sensual kiss. That was something she knew would shut him right up. Eventually they were forced to break apart, it's one day Naruto. They'll survive one day without you. Turn off your phone and just relax. Kurama padded into the room, jumping on the couch and in between Naruto and Fu. He cuddled up happily to his masters, looks like he doesn't want you to go either. How can you say no to him? Naruto looked at them giving him the big eyes and sighed, all right, but just for one day. Fu smiled and threw her arms around him, that's all we asked. Pakura had a very tough time deciding where to start with the investigation of Sasori and Hidan. Their financials, I have seemed like the most logical place for most people, but Pakura had a feeling that wouldn't turn up much. Sasori and Hidan both did other odd jobs beside working for Kakuzu and so they both frequently had cash coming in and out of the bank, so there was no way she could figure out who the cash in their banks had come from without raising suspicion. So that wasn't an option for Pakura, what else did she have to go off from? She decided the best move would be probably be to check their pasts. While Pakura had no idea what she'd find, something just might come up that would help her. The first person she asked about them was Kakuzu, and he was able to tell her a few things even though he was kind of busy. Apparently, Sasori had once worked as a high-up agent for a government, he never said which one. He had been used for everything from an assassin to an undercover operative. From what Kakuzu had been able to gather, Sasori decided he no longer wanted to be an agent and used all of the information he'd had on his superiors to quit without them coming after him. If they did, he'd let everyone know every little thing he'd done for his commanding officers. Now he just used his skills to make money and live a very comfortable lifestyle. His skills in undercover work meant he'd easily be able to pull all of this off. Then there was Hidan, who was a little bit more of a mystery. Not much was known about him, other than that he seemed to be impossibly good at avoiding death. The man had been shot, poisoned, stabbed, strangled, and pretty much every other thing you could think of, but he managed to survive every time. It didn't seem possible, but the man always found his way out. However, that was pretty much all Kakuzu had been able to tell her. She didn't know if Hidan had a reason to betray Kaozu or not. 
Learning about those two didn't give Pakura a ton to work with, but if she had to guess she'd give a slight edge to it being Sasori. He didn't have a motive other than murder, but he had the background that seemed to fit for something like this. It wasn't much to go off from, but it was a place for Pakura to start. Her next step, delve a little deeper into world of Sasori. Sasuke gave a long sigh as he once again walked into the empty house of his grandfather, his steps echoed through the vacant place. It was just depressing to go into here. The only person that he could possibly see was that senile old madman who only wanted to use his skills for his own ed-up goal. For Sasuke, it had been maddening to come here day after day to do Madara's bidding, but it was for Naruto's sake, so he edited up. When he got to his grandfather's room this time, the door was shut and he could hear two voices talking. He figured it would just be silly to knock, so he opened the door and went inside. Just like he figured, Orochimaru was the one with his grandfather, Hey Orochimaru, what's up? Orochimaru smiled when he saw the black-haired man walk in, Well hello there Sasuke. I'm just giving Madara his checkup and usual medications. Perhaps you can convince him that I'm not trying to, as he puts it, turn him into a pincushion. Madara scowled at Orochimaru's sarcasm, Well look at how many of those damn needles you've put into me. Why are you even giving me that shit anyways? It's not like I'm gonna live much longer as it is. Sasuke would have loved it if Madara just killed over right now, but then the shit would hit damn fan. Yeah, but you wanna live long enough to see this whole Nine Kings things come to fruition, don't you? Madara ground his teeth, fine, let's just get this shit over with already. Orochimaru decided to strike up a conversation with Sasuke while he gave Madara the next injection, so Sasuke, I heard something interesting about you yesterday. Really, what's that? Sasuke asked, although he didn't really care. It was mostly just to keep from pissing his grandfather off. Orochimaru was very eager to see Sasuke's reaction to what he was about to say, I heard that you actually went to high school with the leader of the Nine Kings, Naruto Uzumaki. The same graduating class and everything. Sasuke felt his blood run cold and Madara suddenly got very interested in the conversation, well this is news to me. Why didn't you inform me of this before Sasuke? Sasuke had to fight from cursing out Orochimaru right then and there. This could be a major issue, I really didn't see any reason to. I mean, it was years ago and I haven't really talked to him since. Hell, I almost forgot we even went to high school together. Orochimaru didn't know if Sasuke was lying or not, you might not be friends now, but I heard you were rather chummy back in your younger days. What happened to you two? Madara seemed very interested as well, yes Sasuke, what happened? I'd really like to know. Sasuke was on verge of chalking Orochimaru now, we got out of high school, I went with the Uchihas and he went with the criminal world. All that happened is that we drifted apart. Sasuke couldn't tell if Madara was buying it or not, but he finally said, I suppose I could see why you drift apart, and Uchiha doesn't have any reason to spend time with him, but I still think that we could use this. Use this? In what way could we use this? Sasuke asked, beginning to wonder what Orochimaru had set off. Madara had a plan that would both test Sasuke's loyalty and help them get closer to taking out the kings, it's quite simple really. You and Naruto were once very close friends. It could be beneficial if to have you befriend him once again. Say you suddenly decided you wanted to reconnect with an old friend, would that be so hard to believe? Sasuke wanted to think of reason that wouldn't work, but he didn't have a damn thing, I guess that could work. I'm not sure what we'd get from that or how long that it would take, but I'm sure I could pull it off. Madara seemed to be eyeing him very skeptically. You could tell this new information had him rather nervous, well good. That'll be what my task is for you today. You may leave. Sasuke walked out as quickly as he could without it looking suspicious. How Orochimaru knew about his past with Naruto he didn't know, he probably just decided to look into Sasuke's past and discovered it, but it was really going to be a problem. This was gonna make it a lot harder for Madara to believe a word he said. If Sasuke had thought Orochimaru was an asshole before, he thought the man was a full-on mothering, piece of shit, bastard. As he was leaving, Orochimaru was asking Madara some important questions, so you really didn't know about Naruto and Sasuke's friendship. Madara shook his head, no, I didn't know. It's not something I'm very concerned with though. Like he said, 
it was just a high school friendship. I trust my grandson wouldn't let that get in the way of the Uchiha Empire. Orochimaru figured if Madara trusted him, so could he, yes, you're most likely right. It's probably nothing to get into a fuss over. Dot for now. As soon as Sasuke was out of Madara's house, he got Kakashi on the phone so that he could give him the bad news. He'd tried to call Naruto first, but apparently he'd turned his phone off because the call went straight to voicemail. Sasuke tried to explain everything to Kakashi clearly, but it was a rather complex situation. Now he had to watch his step around Madara even more. Considering that they were hoping to get that information fast, this wasn't good. Kakashi listened to his story and just wanted to scream, can we please just kill Orochimaru? We could also beat the shit out of him until he has too much brain damage to function, I'm go with either one, as long as he pays for the shit he's putting me through. Sasuke was thinking the same thing, if only. I know that my grandfather would take that as a red flag and then he'd make things even harder for us. Kakashi gave him a little joke, well we'd just kill him too. Simple as that. Sasuke laughed a little bit, once we get the information, we can do just that. I've gotta go home and check on Sakura. Hopefully you guys can figure out something that'll get us back on top. Yeah, hopefully. Talk to you later Sasuke. Good luck with your wife, Kakashi said right before he hung up. He leaned back in his chair and gave a little groan. Rin walked by and could tell Kakashi was in a bit of a mood. She felt the need to ask him, Hey Kakashi, is there something wrong? You look like you just ran over a puppy or something. Strangely enough, Kakashi felt like he might be in a better mood if that were the case. The problem is, Madara just found out about Naruto and Sasuke being friends in high school. He doesn't know about them being close now, thank god, but Sasuke still feels that his credibility has taken a hit. It could take longer to get Madara's information than we originally hoped. Rin sat down across from him, luck really isn't on our side with this stuff, is it? We've got plenty of luck, it's just not the right kind, Kakashi quipped. Naruto's not answering his phone right now, he texted me earlier today and said that if anyone asked, he was taking the day off. Should we go to his house and tell him what happened or just let him be? Rin didn't see any reason to do that, no, let him enjoy himself for a day. He's been so stressed lately and there's nothing for him to do right now anyways. A little relaxation will be good for him. Kakashi was in agreement, well said. Sasuke said Madara wanted him to get close to Naruto. How do you think that we should go about doing that? Rin realized that was gonna be one of the harder things figure out. They would have to set up a fake relationship between Naruto and Sasuke, one where you'd never be able to tell they'd been friends for years. She quickly felt overwhelmed, why don't we go and see Jiraiya about that one? He's likely gonna have a lot better plan for this than we do. Kakashi had been thinking the exact same thing, seems like that would be the least risky route to go down. I'll give him a call later, I've got some stuff I need to do for my actual cases or the higher ups are gonna get suspicious. Rin was in the same boat, me too. What do you need, about two hours? Kakashi could work with that, two hours will probably be enough. Meet me out front once you're ready. Sounds good, mind if I take one of those donuts? Rin asked, pointing to the box of glazed donuts Kakashi desk. Kakashi held the box up to her, no, help yourself. I eat too damn many of these things as it is. Rin thanked him and took one then walked over to her desk. Kakashi couldn't help but watch as she left. He was so happy to have her back in his life, more than he ever thought that he would be. Maybe he should see if Rin still felt something between the two of them. Then again that could ruin everything if she felt insulted by it in some way. It was just best for Kakashi to wait right now. Yutakata was the type of man who liked to lay low in life. It was one of the major's reasons he joined the Nine Kings. He loved knowing that he was almost always safe and secure in his position, no grabs for power or something like that. Yet, now he found himself ducking his head and looking over his shoulder multiple times during the day. It was something that had Yutakata more than a little pissed. He was looking out his window right now, he lived on the top floor of a very extravagant condo, and was just watching the people walking by on the street. They looked so normal, so content with their boring everyday lives. It was mind-boggling to Yutakata, 
as he could never lead such a simple life. The kind needed his fancy things and high-end style of living. Clearly other people felt there needed to be more to life too, or why would married men pay so much to sleep with a beautiful woman? These weren't cheating bastards in Yudakata's eyes, they were just men who wanted to feel new, that was all. As Yudakata just kept staring out that window, May came up behind him, more contemplating boss man. Contemplating and worrying, Yudakata said with slight irritation in his voice, Naruto isn't taking care of this issue fast enough for my liking. The moment the girls found out someone was gunning for the kings, about half of them said they wouldn't work until they knew they it was safe again. They're afraid someone's gonna come after them to hurt my business. May didn't blame them for that, they're just being safe Yudakata, nothing more. I can't blame them for not wanting to die. Yudakata didn't see it as kindly as she did, they're a bunch of cowards. I mean honestly, just it up and go make some cash. Do they really think that I would let them go out there if I didn't feel they were safe? May got pretty pissed when he heard that, don't you dare talk about my girls that way. You're not the one going out there and risky your life to bring home the cash. Yutakata wasn't swayed by her words, I provide them with protection. No, you have a man go and kick the shit out of someone if they don't pay enough or try to hurt the girl. That does nothing protect while it's them going in, then they just have to fend for themselves. You get to sit in this condo all safe and sound well they're out there making you money, May snapped, about ready to smack the guy across the face. Yutakata raised up his hand like he was going to strike her, if you say one more word, all. May cut him off, you'll what? Hit me, rape me, kill me, yeah right, we both now I could kill you with my bare hands. The only reason I don't take this job from is because I don't want to deal with the headaches. Show my girls some respect, or I'll replace you with someone who will. No one talked like that to Yutakata, even if what she said had some truth to it, why you little bitch. I'm one of the nine kings of crimes, you would be slaughtered if you so much as touch me. May narrowed her eyes, so what? I can still decided to just up and leave if I want to. Do you even want to think about trying to replace me? Yudakata looked into her eyes with anger and lust as well, my god you're sexy when you're angry. May pushed him when he tried to get in close, you. I told the first time you tried and I'll tell you it again, I'm never going to sleep with you, so off. Yudakata looked at Mei, completely enraged, I could kill you and have you replace you in a heartbeat. Dot but damn it, I could just never bring myself to do it. There's something about you woman. Mei walked away but yelled back, and you'll never find out what it is. Treat my girls with some respect, or we will go somewhere else, I can promise you that much. Yudakata both loved and hated that woman. He was determined to see her in his bed one day, and he wouldn't stop trying until he did. While Yudakata was being shot down in flames, Kakashi and Rin were getting ready to go and see if Jiraiya could help them once again. Both of them finished up their work a little earlier than expected, which was good because it gave them a little extra time with him and they needed all the time they could get. Kakashi drove, both and Rin got nervous when other people drove, so they switched back and forth to satisfy one another. While Kakashi was usually a little more on the fast side, Rin liked to drive more cautiously. With Kakashi at the wheel, they got to Jiraiya's in a pretty short amount of time. Rin went up to the door and knocked. Jiraiya yelled, whoever you are, I'm gonna need a second. Kakashi thought out loud, he must have a food on the stove or something like that. Or a woman with him, Rin suggested. Kakashi found that unlikely, no, the only woman I could see him sleeping with these days is. He didn't finish his sentence because someone yelled on the other end of the door. Relax Jiraiya, I got it. Kakashi saw the door open and finished his sentence. Tsunade. Tsunade knew who both Kakashi and Rin were and she wasn't upset to see them. She actually found them pleasant to talk with. Hey guys, what are you doing here? Rin noticed that Tsunade's hair was messed up and her clothes seemed sloppily thrown on. We're here to ask Jiraiya a couple questions. What about you? It looks like you spent the night here or something. Dot and it's noon. I sort of spent the morning in bed, Tsunade said then said with a blush, well, to be more accurate, we spent the morning in bed. Kakashi's jaw nearly dropped and ripped of his mask, wait, you and Jiraiya. Tsunade supposed that she could trust these two, yeah, me and Jiraiya. 
Don't tell anyone about this though, it's not sure thing yet, she peeked to see Jiraiya coming down the stairs and whispered to them again, although I'll admit, it's looking pretty good right now. Jiraiya came up behind them and asked the same question Tsunade had, oh hey, Kakashi, Rin, what brings you two here? Kakashi got his serious face back on, we got a bit of bad news. Your guy's old friend Orochimaru just seems to have found the perfect way to us over once again. Jiraiya step aside so that they could come in, well, I guess you'd better come inside then. I'm get a hell of a lot of visitors these days. Kakashi and Rin walked inside and Rin commented, this must feel like the old days for you. You know, everyone wanting your help with a case. Jiraiya thought it was kind of funny, as that did seem true, I'm not gonna lie, it feels pretty good to be needed again. You don't have to stick around if you don't want to Tsunade, I know this might seem boring to you. One night and you're already trying to get rid of me. Wow Jiraiya, didn't know you were such a dog, Tsunade joked with a giggle, I'm more than happy to stick around for a bit Jiraiya. I don't have anything to do for an hour or so, I'll hang out with you guys for a while. Jiraiya was of course pleased that she was staying, great, it'll be nice to have another person to bounce ideas off from. They all walked into the living room and sat down. Kakashi gave him the full story on what Orochimaru had apparently told Madara. Everyone could see Jiraiya was thinking hard as he listened the issue being presented to him. Once Kakashi had finished, Jiraiya said, alright, I've got three questions I need to ask you. Okay, then ask them, Rin urged him. Jiraiya went to his first one, just how dangerous does Sasuke think Madara could get if he's left to his own devices much longer? Kakashi gave him the honest answer, Sasuke says that his grandfather doesn't have all that much longer, and that the closer he gets to death the more aggressive he becomes. I see, Jiraiya mused, and how long does he think it will take him to get Madara to trust him enough to give him the information? Rin had been thinking of that one herself, based on what Sasuke's told Kakashi. I'd say at least a couple of weeks. Madara is very protective of the blackmail info since it's almost all he has left. Jiraiya kept thinking and moved on to his last question, do you think that there's any chance that Madara will kill Naruto if given the chance? Kakashi didn't even need to think about it, I think he'd do it in a heartbeat. Actually, I think he wants to kill Naruto and all of the kings once he's got full control. So a situation that seemed like it couldn't any worse actually has, Jiraiya summed up, I'm of course gonna come up with a plan, but something like this will take some time. I don't I've ever seen a situation this complicated before, so I need to make sure I've got this completely thought out. Rin was glad he was taking this so seriously, take every last second that you need. For Naruto's sake, this plan has to be perfect. Jiraiya was still thinking, but asked, run me through everything Madara's done so far. I want to get a little better idea of how Madara thinks so that I can better plan our next move. Kakashi and Rin started to recall all of this as Jiraiya leaned back and kept thinking over their next move. They were one hell of a chess match with Madara right now. You couldn't just think one move ahead, you have to had to think three moves ahead. Jiraiya's plan had slowly started to form in his head, but it was far from finished, or conventional for that matter. This fight just kept getting more and more interesting. While Jiraiya was thinking up some kind of way to protect him, Naruto was enjoying his day off. It wasn't long before he was totally grateful to Fu for convincing him to do this. He had been so damn stressed, and just taking one day to ignore it all made him feel like a weight had been lifted off his shoulder. The first thing Fu did was make some lunch for them, a bowl of ramen she'd learned to make by hanging out at Naruto's restaurant. Naruto practically licked his bowl clean, showing Fu that he really enjoyed it. Then they relaxed a bit in the bedroom, Fu took the reins a little more this time and really gave Naruto a good time. Once they'd gotten cleaned up from that, they took Kurama out for a nice walk. The little fox needed to stretch his legs twice a day, not including when went to the bathroom, and spent most of his time chasing other small animals. He might have been smarter than the average fox, but Kurama was still an animal and his instincts were still intact. After that, they went back to the apartment and Fu gave Naruto a back massage. Being the gentleman that he was, Naruto returned the favor afterwards. Now the two of them were sitting on the couch, relaxing, and Kurama was taking a nap in the bedroom. 
Naruto felt calmer than he had in a long time. Oh man, I really needed a day like that. Fu cuddled into his chest. Yes you did. You can't stress yourself out like that all the time Naruto. You'll kill yourself or something. When someone's pulling the kind of shit that Madara is, it's not exactly easy to take time off, Naruto noted, not sure if Fu was understanding his current situation. Fu, however, did understand, I know you're just trying to protect your friends, but you think better with a clear head. I'll be willing to bet that you'd have an easier time coming up with plans now that you've took some time off. Naruto figured he'd test her theory, so he started to think about the issues he'd been pondering before all of this relaxing started. Just like Fu had predicted, his head felt a little better and one of his problems suddenly had a very clear answer, son of a bitch, I can't believe I didn't think of that before. Fu was a little startled and asked, think of what? Naruto elaborated, Yutakata's been bitching about his girls feeling unsafe and that none of them wanted to go out and make him his pay. There's a really simple solution to that. Fu was immediately interested, what have you got? Naruto felt it was so simple that it was perfect, Han sitting on his ass doing nothing thanks to all of this. What if we had his men go and escort the girls to their destinations until a time where they felt it was safe? It wouldn't cost Yutakata anything and at least this way Han's men have got something to keep them occupied. He could give Han a little cash as a reward, which Han could give to his men to keep them satisfied. It would still be making Yutakata money in the long run since he'd have more of his girls out there. Fu did her best to keep up with what he was thinking and eventually she got what he was saying, damn, that's kind of genius Naruto. It's so simple, but so perfect at the same time. Guess this means that your day off is over now, huh? Naruto finally took his phone out of and started to turn it back on, yeah, it is. It was fun while it lasted. Fu had a kind of sad, yet happy smile on her face, it really was. I think I'd better head back home for a while if that's the case. I've got a couple of things I need to run over and get done. Good luck with the pissed off kings. Naruto saw that he had 28 messages on his phone, I can see the texts now. What the hell are you doing? Why do we bother giving you some of our earnings? You really think this the the time to be taking a day off? And all that other shit. Fu told him sternly, you can tell them to themselves if they say something like that. If there's anyone else in the world who could do what you do and not get shot or something like that. Hell no there isn't. You've earned the money they gave you. So what if you wanna take one day off? Naruto looked at the messages and most of them were just what he'd been expecting, although not as bad as he'd thought they'd be. Gara actually even made his more of a joke. However, a select few of them did catch his eye. One's about Madara discovering something very interesting about him, looks like you were right about it being a good time for you to leave, because I just found something that should keep me busy for a while. I don't even want to know, Fu said as she got off the couch and grabbed her things, whatever you need to do, I know that you'll find the best way to do it. See you later babe. Naruto got up and gave her a quick kiss, you have too much faith in me sometimes. Thanks for today. Believe me, it was my pleasure. Fu responded, happily returning the kiss. She turned away to leave, but something scratching gently on her leg. Kurama was looking up at her with big sad eyes, ah, do you not want me to go little guy? Fu leaned down and gave him a little kiss on his furry head, sorry, but I really do have to leave. I'll be back as soon as can, I promise, she finished in a cute little voice. She left and Kurama padded over to Naruto, a little pouted seemed to be on his face. Naruto picked him up said, I know, I hate when she has to leave too. Don't worry though, she'll be back. She always comes back, now if you'll excuse me, I've got some major things I need to clear up. I'm gonna call Han and Yutakata then head over to see Jiraiya. Hopefully he's got something good for me. Jiraiya had spent about an hour and a half trying to play out every single variable in his head. This was move was easily the riskiest move he was ever going to have to make so many lives could be in the balance. Kakashi and Rin were talking on couch, waiting for Jiraiya to give his response. Rin was talking about the old days, reminiscing about when Obito was still working with them, do you remember that time you pulled the all-nighter, and he had like 15 cups of coffee? Kakashi threw his head back laughing, do I remember? You can still see the the place he burned me on my hand when he tried to make another pot. 
Oh man, it's been way too long since we've all gotten together, Rin said, wiping tear from her eye that had see gotten due to how hard she'd been laughing. Do you think, do you think that maybe he'd be willing to talk to us yet? Kakashi looked at the ground. I don't know, he was really torn up about getting kicked of the force. Maybe we could go and see him about helping us with all this. Rin had a hopeful look in her eyes, maybe. It's so weird thinking about those days. Everything was so different back then. Obito was hitting on me, I was always was asking you out, you kept shooting me down. Kakashi did find it crazy to think about that, lord knows I wouldn't shoot you down now. Rin's mind came to a halt when she heard that, really? You'd actually be willing to take someone on a date? Kakashi was smiling a little under his mask, I don't know about just someone, but for you I would be. Rin thought about what to say next, and decided to go for it, well then how about you come over to my place for dinner tomorrow night? Say Adish. Kakashi tried to play it cool, but he felt like he was exploding inside, yeah, that sounds great. I'll make sure to stop by. A new voice came from the entryway, a voice belonging to Naruto Uzumaki, hello. I kept knocking for like five minutes, but nobody answered, so I'm just coming in. Jiraiya finally spoke, we're in the living room Naruto, and you'd better come and have a seat. I've got the basics of my plan worked out, but there's still some things I'm having a hard time to working out. Naruto came in the living room and sat down next to Jiraiya, hey Jiraiya, good to see you. So what all have you got so far? Jiraiya rubbed his chin in thought, well, there's only one thing that I've decided for sure, and that's that simply making Madara think you and Sasuke are all buddy-buddy won't be enough to earn his trust. Naruto was hoping for better news, what makes you think that? Jiraiya didn't think it, he knew it, it occurred to me the Madara might not have ever even intended to tell Sasuke where the information is. I mean, it's not like he has to know about it to take over the king's organization. Why would Madara take the risk without even the slightest reason to? He'd have to be sure he could trust Sasuke first. Naruto wanted to think of a reason that wasn't true, but he couldn't. Damn it, you've actually got a point there. What the hell are we gonna do? That information is the only thing keeping us from killing Madara. If we could just get our hands on it this would be all over. Jiraiya was more than in agreement, of course, that would be what ended this. I've ran this through my head more times than I can count but there's only one scenario where I can actually see Madara having a reason to give Sasuke the information. Naruto was afraid to ask, if you've tried that many plans, that one you've got can't be good. What did you come up with? It's the one thing the Sasuke could ever do that could completely convince Madara he's able to trust him, Jiraiya started, but it's just so risky. I need more information before I even suggest it. Naruto wanted to hear more, oh come on it's better than just sitting around nothing right. Rin didn't think he should rush things, Naruto, Jiraiya's the best strategist I've ever seen. If he says he needs time to make sure everything's safe, then he means it. Just let him do his job, okay. She's got a point Naruto, said Kakashi, Jiraiya just wants to make sure you live through all this shit. This man will keep you safe, trust me on that. Naruto was hit with a twinge of guilt. He looked at Jiraiya and said, sorry if I insulted you, I'm just really ing frustrated right now. Jiraiya didn't feel insulted in the least, don't worry Naruto, I know all about feeling like you have no control over a situation. It shouldn't take me too long to decide whether or not the plan is safe. Naruto calmed down a little bit and looked around at who all was there, hey, how about we all go do something fun. We've all got some time and it's rare that we each of us get hang out together. They all didn't see why not, so Rin asked, what did you have in mind? Naruto gave a mischievous smirk, there's a boxing match not too far from here. How about we go make some bets and see how it goes? Jiraiya thought that actually sounded pretty good, sounds like fun, legal bets, right? Naruto rolled his eyes, yes, legal bets. Grab your keys and let's go already. All of them stood up and left for the match. This was gonna be great. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.